Mr. Chair and members, we can go live whenever you're ready. You're muted. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Barb. Uh, so we can get started, I guess, by the opening remarks, and then we'll go to the, we have actually have some closed files for a change, and then the deferrals, and get started with our uh, applications. Um, so sorry, everyone, about the delay. Good morning. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment uh, public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We also ask that you mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled and you will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. During all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use the share screen or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse First Nation, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances and revisions of the zoning that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter law for non-conforming uses, and um, consent to several lots to create to several properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and in the event of an appeal, the Toronto Local Appeal Body will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. As of November 28, 2022, only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specified persons and public bodies, as those terms are defined in the Planning Act, are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows. We'll call each item in the order listed in the agenda. In making your submissions where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with a presentation if desired. Where the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. The committee may ask questions and then uh, take the matter into the committee uh, for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And the clock is up on the board. And when you reach five minutes, you'll be asked to wrap up. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address. Uh, please remember also to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. 
Uh, the applicant on a or agent proceeds first on a contested application. By contested, I just mean that the people, the people here uh, to make um, deputations or make a submission uh, in, in person or virtually. It doesn't mean that a matter is not contested. If uh, we certainly have, we have op opposition letters which are uh, read into the record at the beginning, but where a matter is contested. Um, the applicant goes first, and please note that the committee will may not entertain revisions made to proposals uh, today at the hearing. The committee may decide to defer the application of being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate, and that all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their presentations. And when all speakers have finished, the applicant or agent is given an opportunity to rebut those issues and answer those questions raised by the speakers. And that will then mark the end of the discussion and the application is taken into the committee for a decision. Okay, some housekeeping matters to take care of. Firstly, the uh, confirmation of the minutes of the last meeting, which was January the 26th. Can I please have a motion to approve those minutes? Mr. Kumorik, who was present at that hearing, thank you. Uh, second there for that motion, Mr. Palmer, who was also present. Uh, all those in favor, okay, it's unanimously approved. Um, we have, oh yeah, are there any declarations of interest of panel or staff to declare uh, on, for the morning matters on the morning's agenda? Okay, and I'm- Hi, Mr. Chair. I, uh, Mishi here. So I have a conflict on item number three. Um, I know the applicant personally and used to be a former colleague. Okay, uh, so we'll declare that. I think that matter is getting deferred in any event, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll just have that noted. Thanks. Thank you. And the reason for the conflict's been noted. Um, okay, um, so usually ask this question, usually the answer is no. Madam Secretary Treasurer, we have any files to be closed? I believe we, we do have two today. We do today. Two actually sets uh, items A and B, 1738 and 1744 Wilson Avenue. If we can just have a motion to close these files from the year 2020. Oh, so are those the same files at numbers 12 and 13? They're the same address, but separate files. So oh, I need separate yeah. motions. Yeah. I mean, we're so we are closing the previous files and these are new files because obviously you can't have two files in the same application. Yes. So okay. can I get a motion for the 2020 ones first? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll move a motion to close file A0442-20 EYK and file A0443-20 EYK. Okay, can I have a second for that motion? Mishi? Yes, Mishi. Sorry. I'll unmute. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. And, yeah. and then we have a second request that just came in. It's in the additional materials for items 12 and 13, also 1738 and 1744 Wilson Avenue. And those are to be closed as well? Yes, at the applicant's request. Okay, can I have a motion? Take the same two. Mr. Palmer and Mishi McCloskey, how do we keep the same? Thank you. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Um, okay, uh, then we have to guess. We have on the um, uh, consolidated plan and community planning list uh, for files to be uh, deferred. We have one item on the morning agenda, item 17, but we also have, I uh, know, going through the agenda. Um, Item three, the one that Mishi just declared the conflict, 106 Celestine Drive. There is an email dated January 30th from the uh, the, um, the applicant, um, and it says they're unable to post the sign. Uh, appears to be that the owners are out of the country, um, and uh, so this is will have to be deferred in order for the sign to be posted. However, uh, Madam Secretary, I note this is a uh, legalize and maintain situation for a new detached dwelling with one variant society or setback so it shouldn't be something that's allowed to float uh, forever since it's a it's um legalized maintained situation 
we can than... include in the motion maybe for a maximum of three months. Yeah, and it sees they are asking March 9th if possible in their man that memo. Um it was noted. Let me just double check. I do have it on the list for March 9th, so the motion can be directly okay. to March 9th. Exactly. Okay, so can I have a motion that affect these members? Yeah, I'll, I'll move to adjourn um, file A0400-22 EYK to March 9th to allow for proper notice. Okay, thank you. Seconded by Ms. Ruddick, thank you. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Uh, Chair, um, just on items 12 and 13, their letter also indicated they want a refund of fees. Is that something we do or is that something... Um, no, they, they would have to put a request first to the director and secretary treasurer. So I will have a conversation with them about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Because technically they're not notices went out, they're not entitled to a refund according to the refund policy. The work was done by staff, so and that's the policy. Okay. Um so item number 17 is on the consolidated planning memo, 34. Burl Avenue, it's for a new detached dwelling with an attached garage and five variances. Uh, there's an email request from uh, the agent Eddie Perez um, per the owner's request to have this matter uh, deferred. And it was also on the city's uh, for number reason number four. Um, so we can go to number 17 and hear from Mr. Perez. Hi, uh, good morning, uh, Chairman and Committee members. As a request, we'd like uh, to be deferred because uh, we've been in talks with planning, uh, myself and the owner, and uh, it was mm -hmm. one variance that was missed because they want the owner wants the front yard setback. It'll be very minimal, but it's not on the list, and because it's not on the list, that's why we want it as deferral. Okay, sounds reasonable. Members, any questions for Mr. Perez? You can have a motion. Mr. Cora. I'll move a motion to defer um, so that uh, proper notice can be reissued. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reddick, for seconding that. I see your hand up. All in favor? Okay, the matter is deferred. Thank you, Mr. Perez. We'll see you again. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we can move back up to the top of the agenda with uh, item one and start hearing applications. Um, Barb, just to let you, I wasn't able to open the additional material. So as I introduce each item, if you could perhaps pipe in if there's anything in the additional materials on a particular item. Sure, the first one would be item 14, so we're good to go. Okay, we're good. okay. thank you. Okay, so our first application of the morning uh, is item number one, um, the address 77 Songbird Drive. We have a revised agenda page highlighted to show changes. So we, uh, this is to legalize and maintain uh, an existing um, rear addition, one story. Uh, there are three variances. Um, one of them is when we revise, as you can see on the screen, and we have the revisions. In addition to the, the standard uh, information, I'm not gonna call it each time, filed with the applications, being in each case, the location map, the notice, the survey, and the plans. In this case, we have revised plans and a revised zoning notice, and planning is asking for a condition of approval. And uh, we have one speaker on this application, Haroon Malik, the agent for the applicants. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. Like, you yeah, know, can, can you start off, and I'll ask everyone else in the line, please start off by mentioning your, your name and address for the record before you uh, address the committee, please. So my name is Harun Malik and uh, my address is 14 Torrance Woods, Brampton, Ontario, L6Y2963. And uh, I am applicant uh, on behalf of owner. I am a designer as well. Mm -hmm. So there are actually three variances uh, as you, Mr. Chair, described already. Like this, just one is a lot coverage and uh, second one is the overall length of the building. It's a little bit exceeding, like uh, allowed is 17 meters, where we are uh, proposed building length is 17.73 meters. And the second one is like permitted lot coverage 30%, which is already like 
even in the existing dwelling, it was more than 30%. It's like 31% around. And now we are proposing 35.35%. Okay, thank that's you. Excluding, that's, ex you. That's, that's excluding the porch. Okay, can you just explain to the committee why this is an exist legalized and maintained that the owner not realized they needed to get a permit for this, or I don't see an order to yeah. comply file. Yes, yes. So there, there was an order to comply on this property that there, that's a legal construction that it's, it's done without a building permit, and uh, the owner served with the order to comply, and uh, now we are applying here for the minor variance, and then we'll move on with the building. Okay, permit. and Mr. Malik, you're okay with the commission condition uh, the community planning is asking the committee impose to tie it to be constructed as illustrated on the site plan drawing, dated January 25th. As it relates to the building length and rear yard setback, I assume you're okay with that. Yes, I'm okay with that. Okay, let's see if members have any questions for you or if someone's ready to weigh in with a motion. Yeah, Palmer, a question um, in reference to the lot coverage on your revised drawings, uh, drawing A103, um, it indicates the lot coverage at 37.88%. Now that includes the porch. So you're saying you want it revised to 35.35, not including the porch. Correct? Yes, not including a porch is 35.35, yes. Okay. All right, just, just a bit of confusion there because the drawing indicates 37.88. So yes, actually, I submitted that drawing initially. If you if you see the drawing submitted on that draw, uh, dated uh, I think it's November. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere in November, right? So I didn't change it because my my like according to my calculation, it is thirty seven point eight eight percent. However, I'm not sure how the zoning plan examiner calculated it as a thirty five point three five percent. The only difference I can assume is he didn't calculate the porch. Okay, so. Sir, you submitted a waiver, so this hasn't been calculated by Toronto Building. I, 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 staff, what do we do here? Do we include the porch or not include the porch? Well, I guess it had to become about to, sir, to Mr. Malik to change it from 38.2 with the 35.35. Did you just do that? On your own volition, you didn't have a, a zoning review. You were by waiver. Did you calculate that because you chose because on the assumption you don't have to include the porch? Is that why you made the change? So yeah, I just made did. an I just I just made an assumption. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, if the committee on that basis approved you at 141.06 square meters or 35.35, and it turns out you're wrong, you'll have to come back to the committee again. If it turns out in fact. Uh, that you were incorrect in making that revision. That's just, um, and I'm just wondering why you made that revision to the community planning, say, hey, it's 30, it's too high, 38.2, or did you, you just decide uh, after you submitted a subsequently based on some additional information that you could delete that and reduce? No, actually it was planning who said that it's 38 point something, it's too high and you need to, you need to like make it closer to the, Okay, but you obviously didn't Possibly, make it right? smaller. It was already built, so it's not like okay, we'll we'll do a smaller one-story addition. It sounds like it is what it is. What it is. They've done it by they're they're showing on the plan that they're going to demolish a shed. I see. So is that what is no, there, is that what that's it what's for? reduced the coverage? Okay. No, no, it's it's reduced the coverage, but still it's thirty-seven point eight eight, including the porch. You've signed a waiver saying that your coverage is 35.35%. Yeah, that's excluding the porch. Is the porch covered? It shows uncovered on your site plan. Yeah, it's uncovered. Okay. Then that's you know, your number. You know what, members and, and, and Barb staff, I, I think here there's no mention of what's being asked of whether it includes the porch. He made the change, the applicant. He signed a waiver, so let's approve what he has done. And if he has an issue, he will have to come back. We're not going to resolve this. 
So he's asked for a coverage of 30.35. He's asking here to legalize and maintain the existing one story rear addition. And if he's right, he's right. If he's wrong, that's his issue, not ours. We have to move on. So I don't see how we're going to resolve this right now. There's no mention in our decision. Um, I don't know if it's Mr. Palmer mentioned whether this is deemed to include the porch or not. If we approve this application, we've approved three variants, including coverage at 35.35 and let the chips lie where they where they may. Yeah, this 35.35 does not include the porch. OK, so. That's 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 for you to decide at a later date. Uh, unless you want a deferral, we will proceed what, what, with what's before us that you've signed, as Madam Secretary Treasurer said, on a waiver. Okay, so uh, members, uh, can I have a motion? Well, I'll move for approval. If there's no further questions, I'll, I'll move for approval. Yeah. The variance is requested as revised. Uh, variance one is revised to 35.35%, uh, 141.06 uh, square meters. Uh, Subject to planning um, conditions, tying it to the site plan dated January 25th regarding length and rear yard setback. So the variance is requested or minor in nature and meet the four tests in the planning act. Okay, thank you, Mr. And Mr. Brown, I trust you agree with my. Yeah, uh, I look, it, of... he's taking the chance when, when you yeah. sign the waiver, um, he's taking the chance. It's kind of ambiguous, but he's got it at 35.35%, which is what he. Yeah requested in his uh, revisions, so, yeah. Okay, and we're not creating any conflict because there's nowhere in the decision that says whether or not this includes a porch or not. That's based on the interpretation. Oh, so and, and interestingly, the planning tied it to a site plan, but didn't reference yeah. the coverage. Yeah. Okay, do I have a seconder for Mr. Palmer's motion? Mr. Kamora, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. You have your approval, Mr. Malik. Have a wonderful day, sir. Okay, item number two is 33 Hilldale Road. It's an application to construct a new detached dwelling. There are four variances. We again have a revised uh, sheet. It doesn't say revised at the top, but if you scroll down to item number four, it's highlighted that they've reduced the rear yard soft landscaping variance. And the speaker is Marco Vieira. Um, other than that, we have the revised plan. We have an email from the uh, from the agent. Uh, ravines and natural feature protection has no conditions, and planning does again have a condition to tie it uh, to the plans uh, constructed as illustrated as stated. Mr. Raviera, welcome. Good sir. morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Mark Raviera. I am the agent for this application, um, and you are correct. We did revise variance number four as a discussion with planning. Um, lot had almost zero uh, landscape area it was all built up in the back so we've made some changes to increase the soft landscaping uh, planning has also acknowledged that in terms of the size that we are proposing it is in keeping with the there's a long hilldale road so i'd like to ask the committee to approve the application with the revised variance for number four okay thank you sir any questions for mr Vieira? No questions from Mr. Vieira. Some are ready for a motion. Yeah, I, I'm good to try a motion. Um, I find the application meets the four tests and would therefore like to move approval as revised, uh, subject to the planning condition uh, tying to the drawings of January 26th. Okay, thank you. Second for Mr. Kamarik's motion. I'll second. Thank you, Ms. McCluskey. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Vieira. We'll see you again. Have a good day. Um, okay, our next, uh, okay, item three has been deferred. So on to item number four, 84 Treeview Drive. And this is an application to legalize and maintain the two story rear uh, deck and balcony. There are two variances uh, there's a coverage, small coverage one, and a rear yard setback. Uh, for the deck and balcony. Um, 
we have a copy of an order to comply. We have a support letter and planning is asking for condition the 1.5 uh, meter privacy screen on the second floor balcony on the north and south elevations. Speaker uh, appear to be the homeowners, either uh, Julia or Matthew. I don't know who's speaking. Mr. Chair, in this case, it'll be Matthew. Also, they've requested to be on video, so I'm going to go ahead and make them a panelist now. Matthew, if you are, you are now a panelist, if you'd like, you are... Uh, now able to turn your, your uh, video on for your presentation as you requested. Go ahead. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry, the video caught me off guard. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Committee of Adjustments. Um, I'm Matthew Sponagall. I'm here with my wife, Julia Vaccarelli. We're the owners of the property that is related to the file in question. Um, Real Hill, we're very happy to defend our file and speak to the minor variances, but we were advised by Angelica from the city that there was an ill on the city's behalf and that the case might be deferred. We're happy to uh, to advance, but look to you guys for advice. Um, staff, is there any issue on why this would have to be deferred? I see planning has only requested a uh, privacy screen on the second floor balcony, which I'm well here for Mr. Uh, Sponagle, whether he's okay with that, but uh, yep. is there some other reason why this would have to be deferred? Did we miss a variance or? I, 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 um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I, I believe yep. it has something to do with the mail outs and some of the houses on streets related to ours might not have received um, proper notice potentially. If, okay, if Let, let's hear from staff on that, sir. Yes, Mark? Mr. Chair, it looks like almost a third of the notification didn't occur. So no one along tree view including the immediate neighbors received a notice. So we have to defer the application. Okay. Uh, and, and Mr. Spahn, uh, you know, normally if someone's here to build something, they're going to get the lippy. They won't be allowed to build it until they get their approval. But in this case, it's I made mean, legalized and maintained. So I guess you should have no problem with the deferral. Um, I, we, 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 we all fine with that. Okay. Uh, and it has been rescheduled till March 9th. Okay, so uh, members, can I have a motion to that effect? And uh, Mr. Spano, we'll see you back here on March 9th after we've had proper notice. I guess you still have to put the sign up on your property, which I assume you've done. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, you're now, now we can see you. And thank you for appearing. Very few people have taken that option since it's been available. And uh, well, soon we're hopefully going back to uh, either a hybrid or going back in person. So. Nice to see a face with the with the voice. Thank um, you. Members, can I have a motion to defer, please? I'll, I'll move to defer to reissue for uh, reissuing of notice. Thank you, Stan. Seconded by Sophia. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, you have unanimous uh, approval of the deferral. We'll see you again after we've had proper notice made. And thanks for bringing that to my attention. Okay. So our next application is item number five, 21 to sleep place. And this is an application for a second story addition above the existing dwelling and to ex extend the existing attached garage. There are four variances. We have supporting material, uh, a list of the variants with precedence. And the speaker on this application is only one, Sean Tusi. Welcome, Mr. Tusi. Good afternoon. Uh, well, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, I'll just for the sake of saving time. My name is Sean Tusi. Uh, I'm the principal at Neymar Architects Inc. Representing today uh, the owners, and uh, I believe it's a very standard uh, design. We don't have any objection from the neighbors. If you get a chance to look at the precedents, we are extremely, extremely moderate in the development. They many of the variances are very much technical. We think they meet the for test of the bylaw and respectfully request your approval. Any question I would be happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Tusi or some ready to weigh in with a motion? I'm good to go with the motion. Um, I believe it does meet the four tests uh, and it's minor. I would therefore like to move approval uh, with no conditions. Okay, thank you. Second for Mr. Palmer's motion. Ms. Raddick, thank you. 
That was Mr. Kamarik, not yeah. Mr. Paul. Oh, it's Mr. Kamarik. Okay. I think Palmer is better looking. Okay. He's doing his, his uh, throwing his, doing his impersonation again. Um, okay, so I'll take that by Mr. Kamarik, seconded by Mr. Palmer. Uh, all in favor? Okay, you have your approval. Thank you, sir. I think it was seconded by Ms. Ruddick, I think. Okay. Correct. It was. Yes. Everyone, it was. Everyone's in favor, so okay. Okay, exactly. Another approval of committee. Thank you, Mr. Juicy. Uh, our next application is item number six, three Jardine Place. It's to construct a new detached garage in the rear yard. And there is one only one variance, a height variance of 0.6 of a meter. And we have absolutely nothing on file on this application. Um, no comments from city departments or area neighbors. And the speaker is Marco Martins, the applicant. Hi, good morning. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, I would just like to say thank you for you guys, uh, for the committee um, reviewing the application and giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, I believe that the variance is a bit minor. Um, uh, the reason why we would like to build the, the garage and the design is we're recently expanding our family and rather than build something wider and occupy more percentage of the property, we just figured we would uh, add the additional storage up in the attic yep. portion of the garage. And that's why we're, we're at that minor variance for the height of the garage. Yep. And yep. I would respectfully like to receive an approval from on your behalf. So that is okay. Thank okay, you. Yeah, pretty minor 0. 0.6 of a meter. Um, so let's know no one has any comments. We haven't received any complaints from neighbors or city departments. Planning has not commented. So members, any questions for Mr. Martins or is someone ready for a motion? I'm ready for a motion. Motion to approve the variance as requested. I find it to be minor in nature and consistent with the four test. Thank you, Ms. Reddick. All in um, seconder for that. Mr. Kumorak, thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. You have your approval. Thank you, Mr. Martins. Thank you so much. Okay, have a good day. Um, item number seven, uh, we have a revised uh, highlighted yellow sheet showing changes to the bylaw. 24 York Avenue. It's the second story addition above the existing dwelling and a two story rear addition. There are three variances on this. One of them has been revised. Uh, the eaves uh, have been changed and uh, the variance has been reduced. We have the revised zoning waiver and revised plans. We have the revisions. Transportation is indicated they have no objection. And we have a, con a letter of opposition from 22 York. Uh, they're concerned primarily with the rear extension, not with the top up. And we have an advisory comment from Metrolinx. Um, the speaker on this application is um, the agent Ryan Kaklos sorry, yeah, for the applicant, as well as we have the neighbors at 22 York uh, present to uh, to speak as well. Mr. Chair and members, okay. I'd like to, uh, Mr. Chair and members, I'd like to confirm that the area resident is present on the call at this time. Okay, Chair, just before we proceed. Um, I brought this to the attention of staff and it's in the, the letter from the neighbor and it's regarding the side yard setback. Um, what they're doing is they're extending the house with the existing side yard setback of, I believe it's 0.45. Mm -hmm. the neighbor is indicating that the side yard setback is 1.2 meters. So they're, they're extending the situation that's already existing, which is, is fine. They don't need a variance for the existing situation. But if they're deficient in side yard setback on the addition, it's not identified as a variance. So just want, want to get clarification on that uh, before we proceed in the event that it needs to be deferred because of another variance being required. Yeah, it makes sense to clarify that now before we. Uh... And again, it's a situation where the applicant went by way of waivers. So I don't believe it was reviewed by staff necessarily. Okay. Um, I believe the original application was reviewed by staff. The amended application was done on a waiver, and the um, they did check with the zoning examiner, and it's an existing situation. So it's you're they're building above. So, I th I thought they were doing an addition on the back. 
they're doing both. They're doing a top up of this one story. And yeah, two story rear addition. addition. Yeah, two story. Yeah, rear so the applicant can address that, but we did check with the zoning examiner. Okay, thank you. Okay, you can, um, Mr. Palmer, you can, you can always address them in the question to Mr. Kaplos uh, if you don't feel it's been appropriately addressed and, and discuss it with the neighbor as well. Okay, so they have changed though that uh, the EBS uh, projection from 0 0.03 to 1.18 on the east side lot line. Okay, other than that, we have a variance for FSI and for the uh, parking space. Variance. Okay, so let's hear from uh, Mr. Kaklos. Ryan, go ahead. Hello. Welcome, sir. Morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, my name is Ryan Kaklos at 67 Chauncey Avenue, and I'm the agent for the application regarding 24 York Avenue. Um, so the proposed design includes a top up of the existing dwelling with a 2 story rear addition. And the goal is to create a more functional living space. Uh, the application is requesting the approval of 3 minor variances. Uh, variance number 1 is regarding the roof eaves projection. Um, and I'd appreciate it if we can open up the revised plan submitted on January 24th. And view sheet a 5. They're on the way. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's see. So planning did not support the original proposal due to the roof eaves being 0 0.03 meters away from the east lot line. Um, after communicating with planning, the application could be supported if the roof eaves were reduced to match the existing dwellings eaves projection. And uh, as you can see in the illustration, uh, the dashed lines represent the existing uh, uh, roof and eaves overhang. Um, and yeah, now we're proposing 0.18 meters um, setback for the eaves. Um, variance number two is regarding the floor space index. The permitted maximum FSI is 0.8 times the lot area, and their proposal is requesting an FSI of 0.87. Um, the increased floor space index is a modest request and would not be out of character of the neighborhood. Uh, variance number three is regarding the required number of parking spaces for the dwelling. Uh, there's an active front yard parking license for one parking space and transportation services has communicated their support for the application. Uh, I'm aware of the, a letter of objection from the neighboring property to the east, but I believe this application is reasonable. The rear addition is an extension of something that exists and the bylaw. Uh, there's an exemption in the bylaw that permits the existing side yard setbacks to be maintained for the addition. Uh, also, the proposal has no height variances. Um, in conclusion, I believe the proposal would integrate well within the area, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kaklos. Uh, members, any questions for the uh, agent at this time? And he'll certainly have a chance to respond to the con any concerns raised by the neighbors. Um, Mr. Palm, would you like Mr. Kaklos to uh, is he address your uh, concern? Yeah, yeah, he's saying it it applies to the addition as well, the side yard setback of 0 0.045 or okay. 0 0.45. Uh, correct. That? So that's due to the the frontage of our uh, of the property uh being less than uh so this setback exemption is seen in uh 105471. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm I don't have the bylaw in front of me, but I'm satisfied. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So if no other questions, Mr. Kaplos at this time, let's hear from the neighbors, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Caramel. I don't know who's gonna be speaking. We can get their letter up on the board as they as they speak as well. Mr. Chair, it'll be Francoise who is speaking. They've also asked to uh, have their video turned on. So I'm gonna make them a panelist now. Francoise, you're able to start your video now if you'd like. Um, you are a panelist and I have unmuted you. So go ahead. Hi, uh, can you see me? 
Yeah, we can't because you're putting up the letters. Knock so that down for a second. Panel. Thank you. And uh, we can ask you if you want to have your, your uh, picture up. But we don't. It doesn't appear Not you've turned yet. the camera on, Francoise. Ah, uh, there we go. My apologies for the delay while I figure out how to turn the camera on. Oh, start video. That's an obvious yeah. one. Welcome. Um, hello. Thank you, uh, panel chair and panel members. Thank you for hearing us today. Uh, my husband, Peter, but I will be speaking today. Uh, we live at 22 York Avenue, and we're attending this meeting because we don't think that the impact of the addition is going to be minor for us. Um, there's a 2.14 meter stone block driveway that's separating our two houses. And currently our backyard is bounded on the south by our house, on the east by another house for about a third of the backyard, by the north by another house. And that addition of 6.1 meter would be almost half of the side of the dry, of our backyard. Um, we would argue that it's within character of the neighborhood. The dwellings on our street at 22 York Avenue and 24 York Avenue, we, we were all built side by side, about the same size, the same backyard size, about. Um, just to be clear from what I read is that the zoning bylaw currently requires a minimum side yard setback of 1.2 meters with an exemption for a side lot line, which is um, the lawful building setback is the actual setback for a lawfully existing building. But we would argue that this shouldn't apply to an addition that's going to be less than a 0.5 meters from our fence in our backyard. Um, in addition to that, we would say um, that having a two story house, not to be too dramatic, looming on the side of our house would shade our garden from afternoon and evening sunshine. It would take up almost half of the fence line and our line of sight from the back deck, blocking a substantial portion of the sky. Openness definitely decreased. Also, they'd look down on our backyard and they could see in our bedroom window. So we do have some privacy concerns. And then our the last two points that were in our letter is that our houses, our houses are old. They were built in the 1930s. So um, we're concerned that any construction activity at York Avenue might impact the, the structure of our house. And we've already had water problem in our basement. So we're also concerned that having an addition in the backyard would impact how groundwater basically flows and would impact our semi-finished basement. Um, we have a couple of other minor concerns about the actual construction, which is that my husband has mobility issues. So we would want to make sure that nothing about the construction would affect that. But I know this is not part of you. It's not part of you, is it? Yeah, that's correct. We we don't deal okay. deal with the build for and the planning issues in terms of any issues with construction, even with the groundwater you're mentioning is not really uh, before us. We deal with mainly the build form, and perhaps we can get since the uh, uh, the applicant is asked to have their video. Perhaps we can put the video back up, and uh, we've seen the letter uh, long enough uh, while we're doing this. So um, yes, so please Thank continue. You. Uh, you know, just deal with the planning issues. I guess is. Uh, what we need to hear from you. So, having said that, we don't have any objection to the top up. You know, like we're not happy with the idea, but we also know that any sort of noise and disruption will be temporary. And that's it. It's just hey. the extension out back. Right. The home on the other side, is that also a two story? No, it's a one story. One story. So there has there been movement in the neighborhoods for people to do second stories and additions or this is if you, yeah if you go down the streets there's a couple of houses that have gone to two and three stories okay thank you okay does anyone have any questions for uh, Ms. Ms. Campbell or uh, we'll go back to um, the agent for the applicant to re reply uh, to her concerns 
just one one brief question, if I may. Um, the applicant's also proposing a deck. Um, should we approve this? Would you? Would it, would it be preferable for you to have a private for them to have a privacy screen there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is that a second floor deck, Stan? No, I believe it's ground floor. Okay. I don't know if we normally do that on ground floor decks or not, but it's a good point. Well, I, I know I've got that situation with a neighbor that put an addition on next to me, and I wish I had asked for the privacy screen. So I feel okay. like. Okay. Uh, so no one other questions for uh, the neighbor. Let's go back to uh, Mr. Kaklos for his rebuttal. Hi, Mr. Chair. Um, so in response to uh, them not having enough sunlight, I once again want to say that we have no height variance. Um, and yeah, with the rear addition, uh, once again, it's just to create a more functional living space and it's not out of character of the neighborhood. Okay. Um, so what about the privacy fence? Uh, it sounds like, or would your client be uh, amenable to that? Because we heard Mr. Kumar had mentioned that and, uh, I feel like yeah, I feel like that's reasonable, and I would just like to note that there are already existing windows on the east side of the existing dwelling, and there's no proposed windows overlooking their backyard. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Campbell? Mr. Ka Mr. Uh, Kaklos? And if not, is someone ready to weigh in with a motion? Mr. Kumar? Yeah, I, uh, I I think for me this turns on whether that side yard setback is required or not, and uh, I'm going to assume it's not. Um, based on that, I believe the requests are reasonable and meet the four tests. I would therefore like to move approval as revised with the addition of a privacy screen on the east side of the deck. Okay. A seconder for that motion. Mr. McCloskey, second. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, you have unanimous approval. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kaklos, and thank you, uh, Ms. Campbell. Thank you. Okay, um, next application is item number 878, Hillcroft Drive. It's an application to construct a one story rear addition. There is only one variance. Uh, GFA of uh, less than 20 square meters it looks like we have a cover letter uh we have a presentation uh which is a rendering and uh photo and we have an arborist report and the applicant so the speaker on this application is amy gorman uh the uh I'm not sure if she's the doesn't say if she's the owner or the homeowner looks like she's the agent uh amelia Curly Goldman. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, and thank you for your time today. My name is Amy Goldman. I'm the agent for 78 Hillcroft. However, I am also the wife of John Nardi, who is the owner of 78 Hillcroft. Um, the purpose of our proposal is for a small extension onto the rear of our home to allow for a more comfortable living space for our family to spend time together. Okay. Sorry, if you can just hang on, staff, sure. can you put up the agent's presentation if there's a nice rendering and uh, more other information, a very nice presentation. So we may as well have that up on the screen. Go Thank ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah. so um, in the supporting documentation, what you'll see within our proposal um, is that it's been supported by our neighbors directly behind us, across the street from us, um, and beside us. And what we're requesting is a GFA that is slightly above the 0.5. However, it's well under um, the average GFA for uh, renovated and newly built homes in our area. Um, in the supporting documentation, actually, you can see in the documentation that you're showing at the moment is the existing space in which we can actually only really sit currently three people in the living room comfortably. Um, since John and I were married in 2019, our families expanded. And so it would be nice to be able to have our entire family in that space. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it, also in the supporting documentation, um, you'll su see a summary of homes um, within the streets on either side of us from 2008 until now that have an average approved uh, GFA of um, 0.635 and our request is for 0.54. Um, if you move to, uh, this is the list and the statistics of all file numbers and approved um, uh, homes in our area. And then if you move to, I think, the next page on the presentation, you will see the beginning of the supporting letters of all of the neighbors that actually directly connect to our backyard. Um, so we're just doing a one story um, rear extension and those would be the homes that um, would have view of that addition. Wow, well, you know what? Let's just stop for a moment. This is amazing the way you've matched up a little map with the letters. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that like that. And that is really, really helpful. Uh, certainly in cases where it's, you know, just, just a wonderful presentation uh, materials, just all told, but this particular feature. We usually scramble trying to do it ourselves while you're presenting. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really helps the, 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 the committee, first of all, in that specifics of the neighborhood letters of support and showing where they are, but just the general application showing the, the, the layouts and the over, you know, and uh, bird's eye view. It's just a really well done presentation. Thank you. Okay. I don't know. I guess you, you don't do this for a living. No, I uh, don't. <laughs> okay. um, so uh, members, any questions for uh, the homeowner? Uh, or someone ready to weigh in with a motion? I do know this, we do have, hold on. We do have urban forestry too. It's our first urban forestry uh, condition being requested. Uh, sorry, I've just got a technical question regarding the variance being requested. Um, it says uh, the bylaw allows 150 square meters plus 25% of the lot area at 245 square meters. And the variance is for plus 23% of the lot area. Uh, so you would think it would be a smaller area, but it's a bigger area. So I just want some clarification on that to make sure that any decision we make is correct. So the, the I'll have to admit the, the math was done by our architect and it was submitted to um, zoning for approval. And so that's where all of the numbers have come from. Okay, so you're comfortable with the, the variance requested at 23% and 262.4 square meters. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess she, they need the variance for the 20 or less than 20, uh, you know, the 17 odd, whatever square meters is there. Other than that, they wouldn't even have to be here. So let me just confirm that so that. Yeah, just let staff. Sure there's no issue. Yeah, I see what you're saying, Neil. It almost looks. <clears throat> How could that be if it's plus 23 and it's your lab plus 25? How can that number be higher than 245 square meters at 262? You know, it's obviously minor, whichever way you look at it, but if it's the, if the. Okay, if we just the, need to fix the wording a little bit. So the way the bylaw is worded, it's the maximum permitted gross floor area is 150 square meters plus 25% of the lot area up to a maximum floor space index of 0 0.45. So they comply with the 150 plus 25. The issue is with the 0.5. So we can, but the total numbers are correct with the 262.4. So we'll fix that for the decision. Okay, good catch, Neil. Okay, so uh, your motion then, you are, oh, sorry, you were making a motion, you were just pointing no, I, no, I just said that, and subject to no further questions from yeah. the panel members, yeah. I'll, I'll move for approval. Um, doesn't look like there's any conditions. Uh, very uh, sure. are minor in nature. I think we have urban forestry. Oh, forestry, forestry, too. forestry yeah. yeah, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Urban yeah. forestry condition two. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so I'll move for approval. Okay, do I have a seconder for that? Ms. Reddick, thank you. Um, all in favor, unanimous. So just, you know, Ms. Komen, that uh, they're just gonna fix up the wording in the decision, which is gonna be slightly different than what was listed as the variance. <laughs> 
<clears throat> yep, that's Good. no problem. And thank okay. you very much. Okay. You can thank Mr. Palmer. Uh, all <laughs> thank you. Favor. Okay. Oh, we already did that. Okay. So thank you very much. And again, a wonderful presentation. Staff should keep them, you know, when someone comes to the counter and says, well, what's, what, you know, this is a good example uh, of, of how to make a presentation and it's being made by a homeowner, not even by a professional agent. So good job. Okay. Item number nine. And just because I'm a little off kilter when we started, I think we started about 10, 15. So anytime anyone wants to take a break, just uh, please pipe in. Um, we're not quite about halfway through the morning agenda. Um, so item number nine is 62 Martin Grove Road. And it's an application uh, for a um, two story rear addition and a second story addition above the existing dwelling, a previous committee of adjustment application approved variances. Um, and that was dated March the 22nd, uh, sorry, March 2022. And uh, a previous committee did approve variants related to floor space index and dwelling depth. And now there's an application here for uh, um, one more variance, a soffit height. And the uh, agent is back, back in. Uh, good morning, Chair and the member community. My name is Bak Din. I'm the agent of the owner of the address 62 Martin Grove Road. Okay, uh, yeah. so just, I can just interrupt. So, in addition to introducing the material, we have urban forestry looking for condition one. We have a copy of that previous decision and an arborist report. So, that's what's before us. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, so the variance we're asking for is just the extra high for the underside of the soffit. Uh, because of the, uh, the modern design of the building, uh, the total height of the building is still under 9.5 meter. We're just asking for the extra high for the soffit. Okay, so that was something that was found out after you got you were here back in March, and that was you had to come back for further variance. Uh, no, the previous owner uh, go for the um, many variance, but we changed the design. Uh, the oh, new owner. okay. Yeah. Okay, you're a subsequent owner. Yeah. Okay, you weren't the owner at the time of the previous decision in March. Okay, uh, members, any and you're okay with urban forestry condition. Sir, your client is okay with urban forestry condition number one? Yeah. Okay. Members, any questions uh, for Mr. Dim? Or is someone ready for a motion? Um, I'm ready to make a motion if there's no questions. Um, consider this application to be minor in nature, uh, meets the four test, and um, move to approve subject to urban forestry condition number one. Thank you, Ms. McCluskey. Seconder for that. Ms. Reddick, thank you. All in favor? Okay, unanimous approval. Thank you, Mr. Dim. Thank you. Okay. Next application is item number 1028 Halliburton Avenue. And this is an application to legalize and to maintain the enclosed rear patio and the new accessory structure, uh, which is a shed in the rear yard. There's uh, our two variances. And um, uh, some slight coverage and a slight uh, FSI. Uh, we have in the order to comply, and we have a before and after photo. Uh, the situation we have um, the homeowner at 28 Taliburton, Alexander Zekovic, uh, uh, speaking, as well as we have the area resident of the next door neighbor, 24 Halliburton Avenue, on the line as well. Mr. Adam, Chair and we members. Mark Foley was on the call earlier as a call-in user. We microphone checked them and they were present. Since that moment though, they have dropped off the call. Now I have emailed them to try and confirm if they're still wishing to attend, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Okay. Um, okay, let's hear first from Mr. Uh, Zakovic and then uh, we'll see if he's come back online, um, if he's watching on YouTube, uh, he can certainly uh, call in. We we don't have any letter from him, I don't believe. We just have the order to comply, and we have the before and after picture. Okay, welcome, Mr. Uh, Zekovic. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Alexander Zekovic, and uh, I am the owner of the house on uh, 28 Halliburton Avenue. Mm -hmm. 
And we are talking about two things here. First is a porch uh, uh, that is uh, in the back of my house. Uh, it was open on one side and one side was half wall. Uh, you can see in the pictures before and after. And we wanted to use that for our dogs, uh, but unfortunately that's on the west side, uh, windy side, and if all the rain and snow goes over there, so we decided to enclose that in the, uh, put the window mm -hmm. past there. That's uh, one thing, That's uh, and uh, another is uh, a shed. So we had a 40 year old uh, existing shed yeah. there that was falling apart. And uh, also two years ago, we have an, uh, a tree over there and a branch fell on the roof of that uh, uh, and created a, a dent, so I had to rebuild that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's rebuilt in the same dimension as the previous one, using existing uh, cement uh, foundation. Even I used the same uh, <clears throat> yeah. uh, anchors. That uh, yeah, it's the same footprint, right? It's the same yeah, place. Same uh, yeah, looks same like height and even same same uh, place for the doors, door and window. So it's basically just replacement of old one because that was all completely falling apart. Yeah, okay. you you didn't even put it. You, you left the distance to the side yard, which sometimes it looks like the neighbor is too close on theirs. If you look at your your before picture of the garage, even though some people would say you're, it's better off being in the corner because it's just going to be place for dirt and debris yeah, to and there congregate. Was existing cement. Yeah, so you, you put know. it right where it was, and there's no variance on that. Yeah. So I don't know what the neighbor uh, issue would have been. These are two very minor variances. So uh, members, any questions uh, for the uh, homeowner, Mr. Zekovic, uh, or, uh, and I assume we don't have Mr. Foley back on the line. I, I don't know what his concern would be. Um, looks pretty minor. Members, any questions for uh, Mr. Zekovic? Okay, if you feel you're ready to weigh in with a motion. Mr. Chair, uh, let me just one more. Let me. Let, I would like to confirm the age. The area resident still is not on the call, and they have not replied back to my email. Okay, and Mr. Zekovic, I figure I, I by looking at your before and after pictures of your uh, the addition or including the uh, the patio. I guess you didn't realize you needed a permit for that. Yeah, I didn't know. Like, I mean, it was just uh, as I said, like uh, uh, already covered with the existing roof, and uh, yeah. it was but just it's open one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Members, any questions for the homeowner or is there someone ready for a motion? And there is an urban forestry condition here. There is? Or no, there isn't. Sorry. There is no urban forestry. My mistake. Um, anyone ready for a motion? Mr. Kumarik? I, I'm good to go with a motion. I believe okay. the application's minor, definitely meets the four tests and would like to move approval uh, with no conditions. Thank you. Seconder for that. Mr. Palmer, thank you. All in favor? You have unanimous approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zekovic. Thank you. Okay, our next application is uh, number 11150 Deer, Deer Hyde Crescent. It's an application to permit a vehicle dealership. Uh, previous committee of adjustment approved, application approved, uh, variances relating to use and parking. Um, there are two variances. Um, for accessible number of uh, accessible parking spaces of four, and it says the vehicle dealership is not permitted in the, in the zone. Uh, we have a cover letter supporting material for Mr. Romano. It looks like there was planning is opposed. It looks like there was a previous decision. February 23rd, 2017, uh, it was approved the committee. It was appealed to the OMB by the city. The OMB approved on December 8, 2017, a five year approval, which I guess is why they're back here. Um, there are conditions of approval by the city in the event uh, the, the committee uh, chose to um, approve this. And um, transportation is okay with the two, uh, the transportation. Uh, related variants. So this was uh, a five-year period, and we have uh, turn the turn matters over to Mr. Romano, who is the only speaker on this item. Mr. Romano, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Franco Romano here, uh, 2095 Autumn Breeze Port Credit. 
Okay, welcome, sir. So we have your uh, report, your supporting materials we can get on the board. In the meantime, if you can explain, I'm a little concerned uh, or confused by um, this was approved as committee. The planning department is still opposed, even though this went to the OMB five years ago. And uh, the OMB did approve it from a five year period. So the question is, are you looking for a further five year here? You're looking to make it permanent, given the fact that the last five year history has been uh just let us i guess i'll just turn it over to you for your presentation but those are the questions i had okay thank you for that sir perhaps i'll answer those questions oh, secondly yeah, and, but first and, whether, one, and that's the question whether the committee uh whether in the event of approval you're okay with these your clients okay with the, the five conditions they're looking to uh, impose okay just as a uh as an introduction i'm looking for um uh, generally acceptance of those conditions, but I'm gonna be asking for modifications. Uh, but firstly, uh, there is an amendment to the application. On February 1st, we uh, submitted the updated zoning notice. So the plans do show the four accessible uh, parking spaces. So there are no transportation related variances. So I am seeking to delete variance number two the parking okay. space variance, and I think that's on the modification that staff had previously shown. So 150 Deer Hyde Crescent is located uh, west of 400 south of Finch, and it's located in an area that's zoned for heavy industrial, but does not contain heavy industrial uses. What you'll see on this location map and in the visuals that I've provided is that there are places of worship, a parking lot, automotive, including auto sales uses. The proposal is to maintain the existing specialized vehicle dealership and that specialized vehicle dealership uh, operation occurs only within the building and only by appointment. All other uses on the property, including the auto service, storage, warehouse and auto detailing are permitted by the zoning bylaw and conform to the official plan. There is no difference uh, in the official plan designation today as it was in 2017 when it was in front of the uh, the OMB or the LPAT. The city did appeal. The city uh, appeared at that hearing and that approval was done with their concurrence. So I'm a little, uh, I have been a bit confused with planning staff's current position. What I will say is is that the, the application continues a, an employment use that is found not only within this employment area, and if we go to uh, slide slide number two, you'll see that there is no outdoor sales display. That was the intent of the condition relating to there, there shall be no outdoor storage or display of vehicles. Clearly a car parked in, the, in a parking lot is there, but it is not displayed for purposes of the vehicle dealership. And that was the intent of that condition. So I am seeking a change to condition number three. So then it says there shall be no outdoor storage or display of vehicles for sale. If we go to slide number three, you're going to see that there is uh, auto repair, place of worship, parking lot next door, as well as auto sales within the same employment area. It's not very far, it's about a 500 meter walk to 800 Aero Road, and that is a lower right-hand side. So the use is not something that is new, although it is specialized. It's not advertised as an auto sales. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna go to slides four or five. Those are the official plan that identify the, uh, the, the proposal as being in conformity, in my opinion, to the official plan, which allow for auto uh, uses. And slide seven and eight are Google images that show that there has been parking on the property even before my client uh, uh, was a tenant of, of the building. There's parking next door. So all kinds of properties have vehicles that are parked, but they are not parked for display of sale purposes. And that's the intent. So the other condition that I'd wish to change or seek your the committee's approval to change is that the, uh, the plans that uh, staff have identified in condition number two mm -hmm. should change from December 12th, 2022 
to, uh, and I believe that was a, a date stamped date um, by the committee to the February 1st, 2023 plans that, that we submitted that show those four um, oh. accessible parking spaces. And for variance for condition number five, uh, if if one were to read the official the OMB decision, it is clear that the OMB decision says that the five year time limit is to allow a review as appropriate of the use at a later date, subject to what is in force at that time. The official plan is the exact same. We see that the property is being operated uh, in compliance. With those with those conditions, and that there is no further need for a five year review period. So mm -hmm. what I would suggest is that the condition number five be changed to the variance to permit a vehicle dealership shall be valid for as long as Faraz Auto Sales Limited is the tenant. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can't do that, members. So you have to either make it time limited or uh, not time limited. Correct. I don't believe that the 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 intent of the time limit is to ensure that the use is operating as as expected. There is no be, there's been no impact. There's no order to comply. No notices of violation. No issues whatsoever. The employment use is continued. Don't believe in my. Uh, respectful submission as a registered professional planner. There's no need for a further time time limit, and I disagree with the secretary treasurer that one cannot include uh, as long as Fry's Auto Sales Limited is the tenant. I I have that condition imposed on patios and restaurants in the cities of Mississauga, Oakville, Burlington, other municipalities. They function under the exact same jurisdiction of the Planning Act in Section 45 with conditions that are tied to the operation and the variance. So I believe that is a fully enforceable condition and is appropriate to impose and would ensure that the this tenant, as it's been operating as a specialized vehicle dealership by appointment only, continues. Ooh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Chairman, members, I'm looking, can I just? Yep. We're looking to add for not condition three, add four sales at the end of that. You want to change number two to the time to the plans of February 1st, 2023, showing the four accessible parking spaces. And you want item five uh, change, which staff is saying that it be valid so long as they're a tenant. I guess it's sometimes we say, well, when, how long is the current lease? But that's not going to help because obviously, uh, I assume this tenant is operating. Um, you know, has renewal options or extension options to the current term. And that's why you seek to, to state that. Now, in this case, I think, I think it's very important. Uh, when you look at the fact that your client is, uh, is willing to agree to the to specialized use open, not open to the public, but by appointment only with no advertising, it's a specialized type of use. So we don't want to just, uh, I would imagine the committee doesn't want to just apply it whole as bolus for this site because uh, if you have another operator in there, perhaps they're not going to wish to uh, um, operate with such discretion as this operator. So perhaps can we solve it with the fact of the use? And I guess condition one does spe does protect the city because it says, well, it open to the public by appointment only uh, and operate in conjunction with vehicle service shop and wholesale business, including offices and storage, which you said, Mr. Romano, that's permitted under the bylaw or detailing in the storage. Uh, so that's my comment. Anyone have any any other uh, questions or comments based on how we deal with this, given that Mr. Romano rightly so doesn't want it to be time limited. Uh, and the city is saying, which Mr. Romano is disputing, that it can't be uh, tied to a specific uh, tenancy. Mr. Romano, you did say in other municipalities, do you have any similar wording in Toronto, in the city of Toronto? Not that that was be the only, not that Toronto is any different from any other municipality. I would imagine staff is perhaps concerned with an issue often as enforcement, that what's the enforcement, who's going to go checking to see that they're still the tenant, but I guess it leaves it open to a complaint by a neighbor saying, hey, that good tenant you had there for the last whatever years, they're gone and the new guy in there is causing all kinds of problems and not complying with in particular vehicle um, condition number one. 
So perhaps that's the way we can go about it. Is that condition number one does protect the city or the public. And Mr. Romano, as a registered planner, is telling us that there's nothing wrong with that condition. So let's discuss. Anyone else have any quiet comments on that? Um, no questions on the specific use, but I think all of these other conditions probably would tie it to that specific user without explicitly saying it's tied to the specific user. They're, they're very specialized, but I did have one question for Mr. Romano. In the OMB decision, there's two variances, one for the use and one is for the number of parking spaces. Has that been rectified because that uh, the variance for number of parking spaces um, wasn't in this application? Yes, thank you for that uh, question. So the, the parking space supply is is zoning bylaw compliant with 569-2013. So there is no longer a, at the time that application was in front of the OMB, we had both bylaws in play. Right now for parking, we only have the 2013 bylaw and it's fully compliant. However, there was that accessible parking space variance that, that came up because of the 2013 bylaw and we've addressed that. Excellent question to clarify Thank whether you. that variance was still needed, but uh, so that was a really good question and we've, we've heard now it's not required. They now comply with the requirement for parking and the accessible parking. Okay, so again, on my, the, the main issue, uh, Mr. Romano, uh, what's your permission on what I say? Uh, your position is that, in fact, uh, rather than mentioning it that those conditions would protect um, Just to keep it just not so long as it's a tenant, but just to not having a time limit. I assume you're okay if there's no time limit and it's not tied to the tenant, so that it doesn't address either point. It just it and that and that the city and the community will be protected by the fact that you have those other four conditions. As well, thank you, thank you for that, Mr. Chairman. And I, I believe all of the points that you made are 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 bang on and accurate. Uh, there is also condition number four, which ensures that everything is being done inside the building. So those are those these conditions, including number one in particular, is very much tied to Faraz auto sales. And I, I would concur that there is no need to impose a time condition or even to identify the tenant. These are that would be a belt and suspenders condition that I was uh, suggesting. Right. Well, so if you Faraz, that, yeah. yeah, if it's a different iteration of Faraz, if the you know they reincorporate the same type operation and they won't offend these conditions. If someone does offend those conditions, that gives the, the neighbors and or the city the right to uh, issue an order to comply. Correct. Okay. Uh, anyone else have any questions? And if not, is someone ready for a motion? Members, there's also if Mr. Romano can address their recommended conditions from transportation services, which sort of duplicate the planning ones, and those would impact whatever revisions he's requested to the conditions. Happy, happy to answer that, Mr. Chairman, if you- Go ahead, yeah. Me? Okay, thank you. you. There, there are no transportation related variances in front of this panel, and therefore the transportation uh, division recommendations are moot. Okay, yeah, they were weighing in somehow to do a time limit, um, as well as they wanted to tie you into the site plan, the site uh, conditions one through four of the conditions of the approved that the municipal board obviously wouldn't be. We've now talked about you're more or less accepting those four conditions with the changes we've discussed or you've mentioned. Okay, yep. so uh, the conditions get kicked in, but you don't have. You don't need transportation because you no longer have a transportation uh, variance, which they mention in the outset of their uh, memo. Correct. They, they 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 identify the same conditions that we've just discussed. But right, but they're also addressing for the the variance of form uh, accessible parking spaces, which you've now re uh, withdrawn that that variance. Correct. Okay. Okay, members, any other questions or is someone ready for a motion?
Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, I'm ready for a motion. So I'll move for approval. The variance is requested as revised. So just variance one where the use uh, is minor in nature and meets the four tests in the Planning Act. And that's subject to the uh, conditions as revised. Um, uh, so changing the date of the site plan and the outside storage is for vehicle sales only. So. Uh, and what about, sorry, what about condition five, I guess? Five, yeah, I think we can eliminate that. Okay. Let's just give this a permanent approval. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll have this application before us again in five years. Right. Or the issue, if the use ceases. Yeah, or the issue is uh, the other four conditions we said will remain as a revised. Yeah, and I'm comfortable that I think the transportation conditions are just a replication of the planning conditions. So I, I don't know that they're specifically required. Okay. Could, could I just get a clarification? Um, are we changing condition three or is it as, as it was originally written? We're adding the words for sales at the end, I believe. So in other words, they can have a car out there for, you know, the people that work there, it's just they can't have cars out there for sales. I, 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 I don't understand the hair splitting there because, um, Romano can, if you want to ask Mr. Romano why he asked for that, he can reiterate. I, I mean, the parking spots are there, so we're assuming you can park cars there. Um, anyway. Mr. Romano, would you like to just weigh in for Mr. Kamarik's benefit? Yes, thank you for that. The, the only reason why I brought that up is because it seems that planning staff has identified in the body of their report that somehow a vehicle parked out there is in contravention of item number three. That's not a that's not a contravention that anyone else has had a concern with, including municipal licensing or by law enforcement or the neighborhood. But uh, I was looking to simply address what is being raised as a as an item of concern in the planning staff report. So that was the only reason why I added okay. what I suggested those terms. I'm happy to continue to to use those terms, but also to not. It's it's not um, it's not that that uh, that. That I'm looking to uh, to do anything unique or strange. Here. No, I, I I get it. I mean, you you can park a car there. You just don't want to say it costs this much or there's sales. You know, yeah, it's for sale. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I, I, I'm good either way. Hey, Mr. Well, second. Your motion remains the same. You second that motion, Mr. Kamarik? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous, you have unanimous approval, Mr. Romano. Thank you very much, and thanks you for helping us walk us through the uh, that application and the history. Terrific, thank you, and appreciate the opportunity. Have a good day. Okay. You too. Okay, uh, next application is item number fourteen, uh, eighty-one Fremont Avenue. Uh, it's to construct an application to construct a laneway suite and a detached garage in the rear yard. There's one variance. Uh, group and forestry is looking for conditions two and five, uh, five being a refusal. We have a planning report for information. We have the arborist report. Um, we have a letter of objection from 83, uh, the next door neighbor. And um, we have four speakers on this application. We have the agent, uh, Andrew Miskiv for the uh, applicant, as well as the neighbors at 75, 78, and 79 Fremont. Um, but sure. I, I had a question. I had a question here. Is it, is it only a variance because the basement of the auxiliary structure uh, counts and the basement of the main structure does not or doesn't count and one does? And we have planning conditions of approval as well. Good chair in the additional yep. material, which you said you couldn't access. There is a letter yep. from the, or a note from hey. the neighbor saying they were withdrawing their objection. Oh, okay. Which at neighbor, 83 uh, Fremont. 83? Yeah. The neighbor at 83 that next door. Okay. But we still have the, the 3 other neighbors. So thank you for that. Uh, for someone can see the additional material. Thank you for if you can from now on. Uh, also, let me know if there's something in there. Okay, so let's hear for from uh, Andrew Miskiv. Mr. Chair and members, before we bring Andrew on, I want to bring to your attention that the only one of the three area neighbors is present on the call at this time. 
It should be noted, though, that all three were present during the microphone check, and all their microphones did, uh, they, were, uh, they were present when, they, when I checked on them. Um, so we only have Lou Van Hazinkwe, uh currently with... Uh, okay, so he's the, one, he's the one right next door anyway. Yeah, and side. the other two, the 75 and 78, are not present on the call at this time. Okay, okay. Let's uh, see if they happen to show up. Otherwise, we at least have the most directly affected one next door. Um, okay, so let's hear from Andrew Miskip. So, uh, sir, this is uh, the, the new uh, laneway suite, uh, uh, you know, requirement uh, in the city. And uh, we haven't seen as many of these perhaps because now interest rates are so much higher. The cost of actually building one of these and getting the bank to uh, give you financing uh, may be affected uh, based on the great increase in the interest rates but um let's hear from you sir so you want to build this laneway suite we have your plans up good morning committee my name is andrew miskey from am design building located yep. at 347 jane street in toronto and i'm the applicant for the project it's located at scarlet and lawrence uh, so we're proposing a two-story laneway house on a very deep lot it's 50 feet by approximately 240 feet deep so it has a lot of depth we only require one variance due to the existence of a basement. Without this basement, we could have gone in for permit right away, but because of how zoning interprets the lane away definition, it includes the basement calculation against us. So you have to, you're talking about the basement in the house or the basement in the laneway suite? In the laneway suite. So the laneway suite is governed by the interior floor area calculation. It doesn't mention that basements are included in the math, but zoning does include it. Okay. It has definition for GFA for a house. It says we may be able to reduce it by the basement. It doesn't require us to. So zoning uses both in their favor and it hurts our. Okay, project. so the only reason you're here is you're over the uh, 139, you were 197, and that's only because you're going to be building a basement in the uh, laneway suite and the basement is included in the uh, internal floor area calculation. Yes, and it's a slope property, a slope the rear yard. And zoning counts anything, whether it's a crawl space or basement as basement. Okay. So from a construction point of view, with the stepped footing and frost protection, we'll have at least eight foot depth at the back of the property. Okay. So uh, again, um, just to point out as we go through the application before we hear from the neighbor, just to remind the neighbor and staff, we're here to approve variances. Uh, so the amount, the, the, if the neighbor has a problem with the variance, the extra square footage, but if they have problems with the permitted part, then there's nothing this committee can do. We look at the amount that's over what's permitted. So we're not here to, to approve uh, as a use. Some as you've heard today that the use is not permitted in the zoning bylaws, so we're here to actually approve the use. In this case, we're not here to approve the laneway suite. That is permitted as of right. It's only additional square footage, which we've heard from the agent, is occasioned due to the fact that they include the basement uh, in the uh, 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 facility structure uh, laneway suite. Can I include one more item? So we have two letters of opposition on the file from the yep. same neighbor to the south. And she submitted a, a, I guess, a retraction of that opposition, which is also on file. Right. So we had the two letters. Yeah, we had the two letters from the yeah. same party. And as the member pointed out, when the additional material, she's now retracted that. But we do now have uh, three other neighbors are on the line. Two of them have dropped off. We do have Lou Van Cusick, the next door neighbor, uh, at 79 on the line. So with your permission, if you finish your initial presentation, you will be have a chance to respond to whatever the neighbor has to say. Can I include one more item? We are providing sure. setback to the north of 1.86 meters, whereas laneway bylaws require one meter as a minimum. We have windows. Mm -hmm. so it's almost double the minimum. You're right. And like you say, it's a deep lot. It's a very deep lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have our location map, which shows exactly uh, how this uh, the situation is uh, configured on the, on the street. Okay, okay so uh, any questions um, for Mr. Miskiv? Members, and if no no questions, let's turn it over to um, Mr. Van Huswick, uh, the next door neighbor, seventy nine. Hi, good morning. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. 
Um, uh, so actually the size of it is, 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 and then I, and I spoke to the neighbor about it and it was, my question was more about the location of a balcony. I noticed on the laneway suite zoning bylaw amendment review that the city uh, produced that there was a, uh, a, a, on page 14, they specifically said that balconies should face the laneway. So that was my question. And, and I, I wanted to know uh, if, if this is not the forum, uh, where, who would I speak to about that? Issue? Uh, no, that, that is the, uh, that's the forum, although we'll hear whether there's the balcony itself is, is permitted where it is. So I see what we're pulling up your plans. You're showing there is a second floor balcony. So yeah. perhaps that does that face the interior of the of the lot, like facing back towards the house? Yeah. And is is that the question or whether that's yeah, that's the question because on page 14 it specifically says on the on the amendment review that uh uh balconies should be facing the laneway to reduce overlook into rear yards. So the they say that the balcony should be facing the lane and not back into the interior. Yeah. Okay, so that's your concern. Yeah, the privacy issue occasioned by that yeah. looking back towards both the house and your house, which is next door. Exactly. Indirectly, I don't know if there's fencing or what the situation, but you uh, you have your five. You can make your submissions if there's anything else you want to say, and then we go back. No, I, well, I mean, uh, the 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 removal of trees is is one thing. We did have a lot of green space back there, but. Um, uh, again, I, I, I think that's not our, I think that's the, the urban forestry deals with that, right? Well, you have can express your condition. They're opposed to the, uh, to this application. You've seen their memo. We have a specific memo. They don't, they, they feel, uh, that the, uh, they've often do this. They didn't ask for a denial of the variance. And then as a backup, they ask for. You know, make a an application to permit to injure or remove a tree. So obviously, you would like the applicant to at least explain the situation with the trees and what trees are going to be lost by building this uh, laneway suite. Exactly. But those are your two questions to go back to uh, exactly. get a response from uh, Mr. Miskin. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Does anyone have any questions for the next door neighbor uh, before we move on, Mr. Chair and members? If there are no questions, I'd like yep. to bring to your attention one of the area residents is present on the call now. Uh, the area resident okay. at 75 Fremont Ave is on the call. So I'll go ahead and unmute them now. Okay, so 75 is, uh, I guess, four houses. We had Mr. Uh, Van Husick at 70, 79. 79. Uh, I assume there's a, a house at 77. And then we have in Indrari Battersby at 75 on the line. So you're two houses away. Indrani, go ahead, you're unmuted. Indrani Battersby, you are unmuted. So if you'd like to take this opportunity to speak, you're able to now. Well, Mr. Chair, they are unmuted. They are able to speak. Okay, maybe they're muted on their end. No, because I can hear. You can try to unmute yourself. No, Mr. Chair, they are unmuted. Uh, I think they, uh, and I can hear the feedback of my voice in the speakers after I stop. So I just, I think they're uh, not participating. Okay. Um, well, if we can't find them, let's go back to uh, then. Mr. Miskiff to the response from the neighbor next door. You've heard the two questions from the neighbor. With their two concerns. Yes, thank you. Uh, so with regards to the balcony facing the rear, the size is permitted. We are proposing a privacy screen. And I'm sure the neighbor's willing to put some additional trees there or um, planting to ensure privacy, but it is a very deep lot. It is 240 feet deep. Okay. So that is not a variance. No, it's not because we, we've met the requirements of zoning. Okay. Okay. And then there, the other concern. Uh, sorry, can you remind me what the other, other concern was? Uh, well, I think it was the trees. the trees. 
Right. So we have to work. What's that. happening in the tree situation? You have urban forestry. You didn't address that also. Urban forestry yes. is looking for a denial with a backup of uh, uh, a permit to injure a privately owned tree. So what trees are being sacrificed, if any, for, for this? I see we do have an arborist report yes. to file this application. So if you look at my architectural drawings, uh, sheet A 1.1, it's the third page. Yep. We, we have three trees that are fairly close to the excavation, proposed excavation. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to work with urban forestry to pick the exact location of these two structures. But we're proposing that tree eight in the front be removed. And if possible to remove tree six and seven behind the project. Just because of the depth of the foundations, we'll have to go within the protection zones. And tree seven and six in the back. I'll wait till you catch up. So go down three pages. Right, right there. So if you zoom in, the tree at the bottom of the page in the center. It's primarily because of the slope of the property. It's primarily where the stairs and walkway will have to go. So we're proposing that's the tree that urban forestry has an issue with. Mm -hmm. So if they allow us to remove it, we will. If not, we can potentially push the project back a foot or two. The problem is we hit other trees behind us. Yeah, and you might have other variants. I don't know if they're affected the variances, but. This is what's sort of before us. So you will be, uh, there is a tree mark tree to be removed. That tree is part of your plan to remove that. You hope to save the other trees. Well, we're asking to remove all the right hand people. side. The, the trees on the right hand side, are those going to be. No, th those are fine. Okay. So just the one basically that's the bottom of the screen right now, it's on showing tree to be removed. The yes. drawing, Mr. Chair, the drawing show three trees to be removed. Yes. Okay. Where the oh, I see the one at the back of, on the top of the page behind the garage. And, and that's and then, because, yeah, I see it now. Okay, I see there's two at the top and one at the bottom. Yes, yeah, so those two trees in the back are not as healthy, but the issue becomes excavation. Yes. We'll have to either injure the tree or have it removed. And the owner has agreed with Forestry to replant trees. Okay, so it is a very replanting program in conjunction with this. You'll work with urban forestry, so you're willing yeah. to accept condition two. Yes, we'll, we'll have to work with them to get the permit anyways to remove these trees. And again, this is provides, uh, if you look at the balancing, this does provide uh, much needed uh, housing in the city. Yes. Uh, yeah. And there are still other trees on the site. And you're saying the other, some of the trees are not in good condition. We have the arborist report is on file. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Miskiv or someone ready for a motion? And then perhaps we'll take a, a short morning break. Mr. Kamorak? Yeah, I'm good to go with the motion. Um, I think this is an ideal um, site for a laneway house. And um, look there for like, I believe it meet the variances meet the, the one variance meets the four tests. I would therefore like to move approval subject to forestry condition two. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kamara. Second for that. I would second just clarifying. Do we need to add the condition with respect to the privacy sc screen? It's in the drawings already. Oh. Uh, well, the neighbor did raise it. So if it's in the drawings, but it may not be, a, you know, something that they, no one's asked you to build exactly. There's not a condition here of building substantially in accordance or, you know, construct is illustrated with respect to the privacy screen. So. If you wish to, that's a good point. Mr. Kamarik, would you like to add that as a condition? The neighbor did. Um, if Sophie's willing to add that as a friendly amendment, I'm yes. certainly open to that. Okay. I'll add as a friendly amendment and second it. Okay, so so amended. Uh, Madam Secretary, you're okay with the wording on that? We do need something a bit more specific so we can add maybe. Uh, the privacy screen shall be constructed as illustrated on the second floor elevations. Perhaps the plan or the plan number or whatever reference. And with the date. Yeah. Okay. Very good. 
All in favor uh, of that? North elevation. Okay, every that's what shows. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you for that. And thank you, uh, Mr. Miskev. I'm you know, add some an additional uh, needed uh, dwelling unit in the city. That's a great size. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so why don't we, we have, we started about an hour late, but we've been at this uh, over an hour. Uh, and uh, perhaps we take a short uh, break at this time. 10 minutes to return at noon. And we'll proceed with items 15 through 20. Okay, that's okay. accepted to everyone. I'm not a dictator. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll see everyone back. Oh shit, my thing's about to die.
That'll conclude our short break. When you're ready, Mr. Chair, we can get back at it. Mr. Chair, you're muted. No, just to let you know, I had some call. I had to move on to my iPhone from my iPad because the battery gets drained very quickly. And hopefully it'll recharge over the lens break. So just please bear, bear with me. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't see if everyone's back because I'm not getting the screen here. Mr. Chair, everyone is present and ready to uh, get started. Okay, I'm gonna have to hold on to my phone here. Um, next application is item number 15, 5 Eldridge Avenue. It's an application for a second story addition above a uh, new covered front porch and a covered and uncovered decks in the rear yard. There are five variants of urban forestry looking for conditions one and two. Uh, we have a planning condition of approval. Speaker for this application is and Antonella Wild. Good morning. Good, good afternoon, uh, members of the committee. Um, so uh, my name is Antonella Wild. I'm the agent and the designer of the home. I'm wondering if you'd like a presentation. I'd be ready to do so. Uh, members, would you like a presentation on this or just opportunity to ask questions? There is no other, uh, no one else present. Uh, you're okay, Antoinella, with the uh, uh, condition from community planning and urban forestry? Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, why don't we just see if committee members have any questions for you? Okay, thank you. And again, I'm not getting a visual. I only see my layout. Okay. I'm in a... I don't see any questions, so I'm prepared to uh, make a motion for approval. Variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act. Uh, move approval subject to uh, planning conditions, tying it to the site plan, uh, recoverage and area, and subject to urban forestry conditions one and two. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. A second. Be right second. Thank you. Yeah. All in favor? Can I, my phone, I don't see everyone. It's so. unanimous. Oh, it's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, Ms. Wild. Thank you very much. Okay. Next application is item number 1639 Kings Garden Road. And uh, this is an application for a new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are uh, eight variances. We have revised plans, but they have no changes to the variances. Urban forestry looking for condition one. We have an arborist report. Planning would like a condition of approval uh, regarding the length and depth. And there are eight letters of opposition. And Mr. Uh, Chair, in the additional materials, we had an additional letter in opposition from 31 Kings Garden Road, as well as several petitions in support. Okay, thank you. And we have uh, speakers listed for this application. Addison Milne Price is the agent for the applicant, as well as the neighbors from 41 Kings Garden, 38 Kings Garden, and uh, 63 the Kingsway, and 41 Sorry, and uh, 32 Queens Mary, Queen Mary's Drive. Uh, Adam, are all those uh, parties uh, on the line for neighbors who register? Mr. Chair, members, all area residents are present on the call at this time. Okay, and we do have the you know, eight letters of opposition as well as the additional one, the additional materials, uh, as well as petitions and support. So we have, uh, let's hear from Addison Milne Price, the uh, agent for the applicant. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair, fellow committee members, Addison Milne Price of Design Plan Services, Inc., 900 The East Mall, Suite 300, Toronto. Okay, why don't you, uh, I think we're going to need a presentation on this. We have three members, uh, three neighbors present. Quite right. Uh, they've spoken. Before I begin speaking to the merits of the proposal, I would like to amend the public notice to remove variance eight. Uh, as stated in the planning report for this application, the plans uploaded on January 30th show the energized outlets as required by the zoning bylaw. 
I would also like to make a quick note regarding the planning report. The report recommends a condition to tie approval to the plans. I'm okay with this condition. However, I would ask that should the committee choose to tie any conditions to plans, to please use the most recent plans, which are the ones submitted on January 30th, which show the energized outlets as required. Okay, the, the condition does only relate to the building depth and length. So that's if it was attached as a condition, it would be respected with those, those two. But obviously, we should use the most up to date. So you're saying rather than the fact that it's mentioned in the condition December 16th, it should be January the 30th. And those are, that's the architectural site plan. There. Okay, it would be on that. And again, it relates to length and depth, which I take is the same as in the December 16th plans. That is correct. They are unchanged. Okay. So you, it pays to have the better plan, even though it does relate to variance eight, but variance eight you are removing um, as a variance. Okay. So why don't you start with your presentation? Um, we do have, like I said, uh, three neighbors uh, present to make submissions. Thank you. Uh, to begin, uh, variance Four. one pertains yeah. to the uh, maximum permitted lot coverage. The proposed lot coverage is 33.33%, whereas the maximum permitted lot coverage is 33%. Uh, this represents a total difference in lot coverage of 0.33% or 1.68 square meters. Uh, this difference would be imperceptible compared to an as of right uh, lot coverage from the street and will therefore have no impact further than what is already contemplated by the zoning bylaw. Variance two pertains to the maximum FSI. The proposed FSI is 0 0.83 or a GF GFA of 411.9 square meters. Firstly, uh, note that the proposed dwelling complies with the required building length above grade, all landscaping requirements, and overall building height under the current city bylaw. This means that aside from the side yard setbacks, which I will explain shortly, the massing of the dwelling is in a location which is already contemplated by the bylaw. Furthermore, the proposed FSI or GFA results in a massing and density that's in keeping with the existing physical character along Kings Garden Road. There are several approved GFA variances along Kings Garden with a similar or greater GFAs, which include uh, four Kings Garden Road, approved at 438.6 square meters, uh, 29 Kings Garden Road, approved at 456.5 square meters, and 37 Kings Garden Road, the adjacent dwelling, which was approved at 403.43 square meters. I can discuss additional approval approvals in the neighborhood uh, if required, but I'll move along now for the sake of time. Variance three pertains to the side yard setback. The proposed side yard setback is 0 0.91 meters from the east side and 0 0.92 from the west side of the lot. The required side yard setback in RD zones is based on the minimum required frontage. And for the subject property, the minimum required frontage is 13.5 meters. Despite this, the actual frontage of the property is 11.68 meters. Given that the required side yard setback for lots with a required minimum frontage below 12 meters is 0 0.9 meters, I believe that a 0 0.9 meter setback is appropriate for a lot with a frontage of 11.68 meters. Furthermore, the proposed side yard setbacks match the existing side yard setbacks on the property, as well as the existing side yard setbacks throughout the neighborhood. Now, variance four, pertains to the maximum permitted dwelling length and variance five pertains to the maximum permitted dwelling depth. Since the proposed length and depth are equivalent distances, I'll address these variances together. The proposed length and depth are 21.79 meters, uh, whereas the maximum length is 17 meters and maximum depth permitted is 19 meters. However, as mentioned in the planning report, the additional length and depth above what is permitted by the zoning bylaw is entirely below grade. The actual rear main wall of the proposed building will be generally in line with the rear main walls of both adjacent dwellings. Uh, because of this, as we discussed, planning staff recommends a condition of approval that the application be constructed as illustrated on the architectural site plan. And I believe this is an appropriate condition. 
Now, uh, variance six pertains to the maximum permitted height of a flat roof dwelling. Note this variance is technical in nature and it's only applicable due to outstanding appeals to the current citywide bylaw. Under the uh, former Etobicoke zoning code, the proposed dwelling is considered as a flat roof and is thus subject to a maximum height of 6.5 meters. However, as per the current bylaw, 569-2013, the proposed dwelling is considered as a slope proof dwelling and is compliant with the maximum per per permitted height of 9.5 meters. So this truly is a technical variance pending the discontinuance of the former zoning bylaw. And uh, the last variance, variance seven, pertains to the width of the exterior front stairs. The proposed front stairs are 2.55 meters wide, whereas the maximum width is two, point, is two meters for encroaching stairs. This represents a difference of 55 centimeters and would be imperceptible compared to an as of right stair width. In addition, the stairs are only two risers, which further mitigates any impact from this variance. Uh, based on this justification, I am of the opinion that this proposal fits in with the existing and planned context along Kings Garden Road. Uh, for these reasons, I believe that the application represents good planning and meets the four tests under Section 45.1 of the Planning Act. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. However, as there's still one minute left, um, if the committee would like, I could, I'd also uh, address some of the issues that were raised in the objection letters. Well, that's of your option. You'll have a chance to respond after you've heard from the people who've spoken. It uh, looks like a lot of the neighbors are just, you know, quoting percentages. And although some of them did mention the prevailing character, we obviously don't go by percentages. So it's up to you if you want to continue. I can't see the clock, and I only seem to be on an auto uh, audio. Mr. Chair, we're at four minutes thirty seconds. Okay. So um, in any event, uh, does any any of the members have any questions for the agent before we move on to hear from the neighbors? I, I'd like to ask a question at Stan. Um, the number 37, which is directly next door, I believe you alluded to the GF, how yours compares, uh, your proposal compares in terms of GFI. Can you also comment on how it compares in, uh, with length and height? Um, yes, absolutely. So if you, uh, if city staff could kindly pull up the site plan. It's on the way. And you express the GFI in square meters. If you could also express it. Absolutely. It in, so terms the, of, in terms uh, of percentage. The FSI of 37 Kings Garden Road, which is approved in 2020, was 0 0.81. It was also approved with the exact same height of 9.5 meters. And the building depth was 19.25 meters, whereas the building length was 18.97 meters. You'll note if you compare the rear main wall to the proposed building to that which exists at 37 Kings Garden Road, the two rear, rear main walls generally line up. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Mr. Mill Price, before we hear from the neighbors. It was a very good question, a very good answer to kind of put them in context. Okay, so uh, we might as well go in order uh, on my speakers list. The next, the first next speaker is the one uh, right next door at 41 Kings Garden Road, either uh, Mr. or Mrs. MacArthur. I'm not sure who's gonna be speaking. Mr. Chair, and that is, in this case, it'll be um, Ron who is speaking. Okay, Ron MacArthur, welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Ron MacArthur, and my wife and I are the homeowners at 41 Kings Garden Road in Etobicoke, and we are the neighbors immediately west of the applicant. I would like to highlight the added importance of today's hearing, especially in light of the recent passage of Bill 23. Your decision today is more critical than in the past because opponents of applications, actually 10 of us in this case, no longer have the right to appeal your decision. The applicant owner still has that right, meaning a rejection of this application today still allows for further review, discussion, and negotiation, but your approval does not. 
As such, we are respectfully and urgently requesting that the committee give strong consideration to refuse this application as currently proposed. As noted in greater detail in the objection letter we submitted, this application fails to meet the criteria that the Committee of Adjustment needs to be satisfied with to issue an approval. That starts with the requirements spelled out in section 4.1 of the current Toronto official plan. This application fails to respect the prevailing physical characteristics and character of the street and neighborhood. It fails to fit the existing physical character as per the official plan requirement. We submitted photos of 16 consecutive immediately surrounding homes with, of the applicant's lot in our written objection to demonstrate prevailing character. Will you please scroll to down near the bottom, Appendix B, to show those homes and the map that I highlighted all of those homes as being on. So you can get a feel for all the homes in the neighborhood. These are not selective homes, but the seven consecutive homes immediately across the street, five homes immediately on the same side of the street, and four consecutive homes on Prince Edward Drive at the T intersection of King's Garden. All these homes provide clear evidence of what the prevailing characteristics are. And again, the key word here is prevailing, as this is the policy requirement that needs to be adhered to in this case. Apart from one gross overbuild at 37 Kings Garden, the prevailing character is not these overbuilds. The overbuild proposal at 39 Kings Garden fails to meet the specific requirements listed in section 4.1.5. Prevailing heights, massing, scale, density, and dwelling type. All 16 of the existing homes are consistent in style. And as you, you can scroll through them and see that the consistency is there. Um, number of stories, side yards, density. The proposal is the clear outlier that fails to respect the prevailing character. The proposal fails to meet prevailing size and building type of the 16 two-story, eight-foot ceiling homes. The applicant request is for an overbuilt three-story home, all of nine to 10-foot ceilings. The prevailing lot configuration with side yards and density use that you can see in these photos allows for a great deal of space. This is not respected in evidence by requests to deviate side yard setbacks and the floor space index by approximately 60%, all to maximize the size of the overbuilt. The application fails to meet the prevailing design and elevations by requesting an egregious height variation of 50%. This design completely dwarfs the prevailing homes by many feet, despite the flat roof design. This is still a dramatic and noticeable height difference, especially in the immediate neighborhood. Again, it is requested that this proposal be refused and sent back for revisions needed to comply with the Toronto official plan. Also, the variances requested fail to meet any reasonable definition of minor. Variance requests two, four, and six all ask for allowances of 30 to 65% over the allowable bylaw provisions. Minor is generally defined in dictionaries as small, slight, and insignificant. The Ontario Provincial Police, for example, do not consider driving at 30 to 65% over the speed limit as minor. That variance can result in an immediate loss of license. This proposal needs to be rejected and sent back for revisions needed to comply with any reasonable definition of minor variance. In summary, we oppose this gross overbuild request on our street and in our neighborhood. This overbuild request does not respect and reinforce the general physical patterns of the neighborhood as specified in the Toronto official plan. The owner and their representative will now try to play down and brush over the gross overbuild design and attempt to show signatures of support. Please note, all support signatures were filed after the submission deadline and all but two are located so far from the applicant property that they do not even appear on the file map created by City of Toronto's Daniel Gradsick. The applicant cannot demonstrate compliance with section 4.1.5 of the Toronto official plan based on what you have seen and heard in our opposition filing. You must refuse this application today in order to allow for more discussion, design modification and review to achieve a design that complies with the Toronto official plan 
and returns with minor variance requests. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. MacArthur. Um, members, any questions for Mr. MacArthur before we go on to the next speaker? We've had his letter up on the board, opposition letter eight, while he's been speaking uh, with the photos attached. Any questions for him before, if you can just call it, I don't have a visual on everyone before we go on to the next speaker. Uh, so if there are no questions for Mr. MacArthur, we'll move on to Phil Lawrence from 32 Queen, Queen Mary's Drive. Hello. Hello, sir. Oh, hi, it's Phil Lawrence, 32 Queen Mary's Drive. I, uh, our property backs onto the uh, proposed new build we share a fence line, and um, I think you have a copy of my letter from a week or two ago. But we see this, uh, first of all, we don't see this as, uh, these as minor variances at all. And uh, you, I've outlined some that, that particularly bother us. But we, we view this uh, home build as a grossly oversized box on an undersized lot, which will dominate our backyard and the backyards of several around the property. So <clears throat> our request is that um, uh, that you review the variances and, and maybe adjust, approve the minor ones if there are any, uh, but um, we object based on the fact that uh, it doesn't represent the prevailing home style of, of the area or the street. Okay, are you, uh, is that the end of uh, what you have to say, Mr. Lawrence? Yeah, that's basically the end of what yeah. I, I mean. I'm happy to answer questions, but this new home will dominate our backyard with three stories of windows. Yeah, we see where you are. You're right next to your uh, 32, right sort of behind Kitty Corner, one lot. Yeah, we, we um, behind. are behind Mr. MacArthur and partly yeah. behind this new yeah. property. You're at 32 and then 30 is directly behind. You're at number 32. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Members, any questions for Mr. Lawrence before you move on to the next speaker? Okay, if if none, uh, we'll speak to Ms. the next speaker is 38 Kings Garden across the street, and that's uh, speaker is Timothy Geary. Hello, um, my name is Timothy Geary, and I am the owner uh, and resident at 38 Kings Garden Road. And I oppose the approval of this application for variance. Um, based upon the following uh, points, and I should also uh, state that uh, I certainly concur with uh, the points made by Mr. MacArthur and Mr. Lawrence. Um, uh, this plan, as others have said, is in contravention of uh, Section 4.1.5 of the Toronto Official Plan. Uh, um, uh, the proposed plan does not support the prevailing, prevailing character of the neighbourhood. The proposed plan represents uh, an assault on the evolution of this cherished neighborhood. Yes, uh, I mean, neighborhoods must experience some evolution, um, not this type of revolution that this structure would represent. Um, the, the, the variances requested are certainly not minor, particularly the height uh, uh, variance, and should accordingly be rejected. Um, the this type of structure becomes divisive uh, to a neighborhood and, and communities are one of the most important assets that we have. We don't need further division within it. So again, based upon um, my, my review of this, I, I strongly urge uh, this uh, application be rejected as the variances are not minor. That's uh, my comment, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. And while you've been speaking, we've had your opposition letter, which is uh, number seven on our bookmark up on the board uh, while you've been speaking. Uh, any questions for, for Mr. Geary uh, before we move on to the last the neighbor registered to speak? The neighbor uh, at 63, the Kingsway, uh, Burke Tukan Olana. Mr. Chair and members, I'd like to uh, let you know that we just received an email from uh, the area resident at 63 the Kingsway that says that they do not want to speak. Uh, explicitly, it says this owner, this is the owner of 63, the Kingsway. I have no objection on regards to of the 39 Kings Grove. I'm just participating. 
couple of typos in there, okay. but I think that we can put it on screen if you need to, but it's okay. I don't think we need. Okay. So in that case, let's go back to uh, Mr. Milne price for his rebuttal uh, to the three uh, speakers who have spoken. Thank you very much. And again, I, I guess, yeah. So community planning, their main concern was with the length and their depth and they sort of given us a memo. They don't even mention the issue about the, uh, the issue of the other variances, including the main, the floor space index, uh, which is, I guess, the main, uh, the, the, seems to be the one that's uh, most, uh, and the height, which are the two concerns of the, the neighbors, as I've heard. Go ahead, sir. Well, so, sorry, may, may I begin my rebuttal? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. So, uh, Firstly, uh, to clarify, uh, the subject property is not listed or designated on uh, the heritage register, uh, nor is this area in fact. Um, there are no homes on Kings Garden Road that are on the, the heritage register. Uh, as I explained in my initial presentation, um, I believe that the pro proposed FSI uh, fits in with the current existing physical character along Kings Garden. Since the proposed side yard setbacks match the existing side yard and the proposed height is compliant with the current citywide maximum height, this dwelling will have no impact further than what is already contemplated in the bylaws for a commensurate lot. I'll also point out, as I'm sure the committee is aware, the test of minor is not based on a percentage difference. The principal consideration is that of the potential impact that the variance may have and whether that impact is minor or acceptable. Um, I'll, I'll also state that I'm aware of the appeal changes that have been implemented by the province. Due to these changes, uh, we have put a greater emphasis on consultation with neighbors for all applications. I'll point out that uh, members of my firm and I have worked extensively with the property owner to consult with all neighbors on the street, discuss the designs with them. Uh, we've provided our contact information on all support petitions that we have issued. In addition, we've posted an additional sign on the property with our company's information next to the required public notice sign. So if there was any neighbor who would like to consult or discuss the design, we were always uh, able to do so. Now, with regard to the claims that the proposal does not meet the tests under 415, uh, I'll, I'll first of all note that based on the evidence of similar massing that currently exists on the neighborhood, I would put to the committee that this bill does indeed reflect the general physical patterns in the neighborhood, such as massing, density, uh, scale, height, and building type. Uh, it's consistent with the existing setbacks in the area. 0 0.9 meters is quite common. Um, it matches the FSI of approved and constructed homes and the height is compliant with the current bylaws. Uh, regarding the photo study that was uh, uploaded, I'll point out that there are well over 16 homes um, on the street. 16 homes does not capture the prevailing character. Uh, despite this, I'll point out that by taking photos of uh, less than half the buildings on the street, uh, there are still a var variety of building sizes and characteristics, including side yard setbacks, differencing scales, uh, massing, and heights. Um, there are no GFAs or FSIs or any other measurements on the photo. Uh, so it is possible that one of the pictured buildings has a similar or greater floor area or height than the ones proposed. Uh, I, I am, don't believe that there are any other uh, items that were brought up. If there any members would like me to address any concerns, I will do so now. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. Whoops, I'm muted here. Uh, anyone have any questions for Mr. Milne Price or for that matter, any of the neighbors at this at this juncture? Okay, if not, um, I guess we're ready for uh, consideration of a motion or if anyone has any comments uh, on this application uh, prior to doing that. And again, I don't have a visual on everyone, so please just pipe up. Sorry, Michael, I, I'd like to make a comment if Stan. Yep. Um, 
Well, what's being proposed here um, is 4,400 square foot house. Um, the justification for the reduction in the side yard setbacks is that it's a smaller lot. Um, yet at the same time, the GFA is being pushed to 0.83. So it's kind of like a sucking and blowing at the same time, if you ask me on that justification. But um, I also note that the house next door is slightly smaller at 0.81. And for me, that was a big reference point. And I'm, I'm thinking the applicant here is, is kind of trying to push the envelope. And that, that's my comment. Okay, any other comments or if, uh, no other comments, if you'd like to, uh, uh, feel like you'd like to make a motion or unless you'd like to hear what others have to say. It's interesting, we haven't had a com issue from community planning on this. They were more concerned uh, with the length and the depth and not the uh, coverage issue. Uh, and the height seems to also be an issue with the neighbors. Uh, uh, it's just a, a number thing or how it actually pro projects the street. Oh, I, I understand the height argument. Uh, I, I don't have an issue with, with the height. I think that's that's reasonable. It, so for, it, for, for me, it's the GFA. Yep. Okay. Anyone else have any comment or does someone like to weigh in with a motion? Uh, now that we've had a discussion, at least it's been a limited discussion with Mr. Kamarik indicating his, what his concern is. The elephant in the room, I guess, is the issue which I believe the first neighbor uh, brought up uh, is the issue that, uh, you know, the stakes sort of since the government, uh, since November 22nd, 2022 have certainly uh, made these this the issue of the committee presentation more important to the neighbors, uh, given the fact that they don't have a writing appeal. But again, we have not been given any uh, indication from city legal or anyone as to uh, change the way we look at applications as a result of that. So, any other uh, comments, or is someone ready to uh, weigh in with a motion? And again, I'd only see Stan and. I scroll to um, the just page. just a comment. Um, one of the neighbors mentioned about the length and depth that it's only for the basement, and and I think the applicant has indicated that as well. But I, the the neighbor pointed out that they could come again in the future and build on top of that. I just, you know, they say it's. I think their site plan says it's for storage of, of yeah. uh, Neil, furniture or something. Planning condition is uh, then having the planning put in. That was the whole nature of the planning report and why they've asked for their condition that it be constructed as illustrated on the architectural plans. And Mr. Uh, Milne Price has asked you to put the more recent date uh, as it relates to the building length and depth. So they couldn't do that for the length and the depth. They would have to come back because it's been specifically tied to the plan. Which, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Just an observation. Okay. So, again, we're waiting for a motion on this. Uh, having, uh, in the meantime, having uh, some discussion and some commentary. Um, you know what? I, I'm moved by the fact that planning uh, wrote a report in support of this and didn't seem to have an issue with really anything and, and they've tied it to site plans related to the length and depth. So with that, I think I will move for approval. Variances requested are minor, sorry, the revised variances. So removing variance eight and um, I'll tie that into the uh, site plan dated January 30th, 23 regarding length and depth and uh, with urban forestry condition one. Okay, we eliminated the variance eight, right? And yeah, variance eight is is gone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Have a second for that motion. Agent McCloskey, the second. Thank you. All in favor? I can't see what. Perhaps someone else can give me a visual on Neil and. Uh, Just Neil and Michi. Yeah. That's it. So is it unanimous? No. No. Sophia is opposed. Chair. Sophia Reddick opposed. Okay. Thank okay. you. So oh, sorry, I'm opposed as well. Okay, so the motion carries three to two with uh, Ms. Reddick and Mr. Kamarik dissenting. Uh, the application is approved on conditions.
thank you to Mr. Moon Price and thank you for your neighbors uh, for your participation as well. And I guess we can move on to item number 17, which is, um, oh no, 17 has been deferred. So we move on to item number 18, 28 Greenbrook Drive, which is an application for a one story rear addition, a sunroom, one variance. Uh, we have a west side setback from 1.8 required to 1.4. Uh, I assume that's for the existing and the extended. We have nothing whatsoever on file from anyone. And the agent is uh, Nuor El Gendi. Nuor. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I'm the agent for 28 Greenbrook Drive. Um, as you mentioned, the purpose of this application is to, const to construct a one story year yard sunroom addition. We are requesting a side yard setback of 1.4 meters, whereas the required minimum side yard setback is 1.8 meters. The reason for this is we want to we want the um, proposed sunroom wall to be flushed with the existing house wall. Okay. Uh, if the variance is minor in nature, it meets the core test, and I'm looking for your approval if you have no questions. For me. Okay, looks pretty minor to me at 0 0.0.4, uh, and with a justification for building it in line. Um, and again, we have nothing from area residents or any of the city departments. Uh, so any questions for the agent or some ready for a motion? I'm good to move a motion. Stan, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I find the application to be minor in meeting the four tests and like to move approval with no conditions. Okay, thank you. Second for that. Mishy, thank you. Mishy McCluskey seconding. All in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. You have your approval. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Okay, the next application is number 1918 Wilgar Road. It's for construct a two story rear addition, a new covered rear porch, and a new rear yard and ancillary structure being a shed. And the existing detached garage in the rear yard will be removed. There are four variances, and all we have is um, advisory comments from transportation and no objection. That's all we have seem to have on this application. Uh, and the speaker is Kevin Boost, agent for the applicant. Mr. Chair, I think there's forestry comments on it as well. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. On 19? Uh, yes. I, I've got one and two. Maybe, maybe it's my mistake. Though. Oh, I have that on number 20. Maybe I made a mistake. One and two for 19 as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we have urban forestry conditions one and two. And uh, we'll hear from Mr. Kevin Booth, assuming that's acceptable. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Kevin Booth from Jordan Riley Group. We're in uh, 1036 Wayne Place in Burlington. I am both the agent and designer for the owners, John and Captain Levi. Um, my clients were actually, are looking to expand their home. Their family is getting larger, and the functionality of the older character home at this point just isn't conducive to large families. It, it currently has a small kitchen. They want to expand their kitchen space and move their living into the backyard as well with a, a nicer yard and a pool and a nicer cabana, so shed type of structure. Um, I don't really believe that much more of a pre presentation is required. When we did do the design, we took uh, a look at the neighbor neighboring properties and what was acceptable in the neighboring properties as far as uh, coverage and gross floor index and we're well within those. Um, there is an existing side yard setback that has to be maintained um, because our addition is along that same wall um, on the west side of the property. Both neighbors on both sides of the property have been spoken to, the plans have been shown to them Neither of them have objections, so I would respectfully request approval from the committee. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions for the agent or is someone ready for a motion? Let's see everyone. I can't see everyone on the same page, so just put your hand, uh, just call out if you want to make a motion. Yeah, I'll move a motion. Oh, sorry, Stan, did you want to go ahead? No, it's okay. Go ahead, Neil. Okay, I'm going to move for approval 
uh, variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act, and that's subject to uh, urban forestry conditions one and two. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Second for that. I'll second. All in favor? Okay, I assume it's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have your approval. Okay, Mr. Oldie. Or sorry, Mr. Booth. Mr. Booth. Okay, so we are moving on to our last application of the uh, morning session. It's 50 Castleton Avenue. Uh, it's an application to construct a new fourplex. There is one variance, which is a little technical. It says in an RM zone, a dwelling unit is permitted in a fourplex if the zoning label on the zoning bylaw map either does not include a U value. I assume you means uh, unit or has a numerical value of four or greater following the letter U in the zoning label. In this case, the zoning label has a U value of two. So that means I would think Mr. Uh, Mr. Cronus is that it's two units are permitted because it has a letter two and not a letter four, if that's what that means. Uh, we do have a cover letter from uh, Mr. Cronus, uh, the agent, uh, as well as further commentary from him. We have a copy of a previous decision. And um, that decision is January 21, 2021. And um, my question, I guess, is question is uh, for Mr. Cronus is, was the fourplex contemplated in the previous application? Uh, all right, so was this a, is there a tech, this a technicality? And we do have the neighbors on both or both sides as well registered to speak. The the neighbor at fifty two and forty eight on the line. Adam, provide are they on the line? Indeed. Yes, Mr. Chair. Both area residents are on the call. We just have a name change for the uh, resident at fifty two Castleton. It'll be Jeff speaking, not uh, Deborah. Okay. Okay. In that case, let's uh, hear from uh, uh, the agent uh, Paul Cronus uh, for the applicant. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Chairman and members of the committee. I'm assuming you can hear me. Yep. Um, uh, you're correct. The, uh, the variance is exactly as you stated. Uh, the current zoning in the RM permits uh, two units, and whereas uh, we're seeking permission for the four units. Um, I can elaborate further. I can elaborate further on the matters that are covered in my covering letter, but basically it's the uh, reconstruction of the existing structure with the third floor. Uh, with an addition in the rear and a two floor addition uh, to the main dwelling to permit for the four units. There's one basement unit and three units uh, throughout the first and second floor. Uh, the only variance uh, is, as you uh, indicated, uh, all other regulatory requirements in terms of density, setbacks, height, and the like uh, are all in compliance. Um, there is, uh, as far as I, as far as I, uh, I was aware, there was no letter of opposition. Uh, and no um, comments from any departments from uh, planning or 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 uh, forestry. Um, it, it's it's like you said a, a simple technical variance. The built form of a fourplex is permitted in the RM zone. Uh, the official plan uh, in neighborhoods contemplates fourplexes, so there's no issue with the official plan. It's uh, it's a question of taking the U2 to a U4. Now you mentioned the previous decision. Uh, which I'm not aware of. Uh, um, uh, the mayor, I, I'm not aware of the previous decision, and perhaps if you have it available, you can put it on the screen. I can have a quick look at it. But um, but overall, I think uh, you'll find uh, that the application is minor in nature. It's desirable and in keeping with uh, the EHON initiative, which uh, you are your committee is uh, very familiar with. So. Oh. So the previous looks like, so am I correct that the previous application and I was looks like it was your firm. Was it not? Your no, 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 it's, it's William Utridge. Oh. Okay. So, yes, oh, okay. I, 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 I did not, I did not include that in my submission. In fact, oh. I, I was, uh, but can I have a quick look if you scroll down? Yeah. Is it the um, same? It, Hold on just a second. It's the same owner. Yes, right? yes it, it, uh, uh well the owner is different it's now a company it was yeah. pretty, an individual uh but let me can we get that on this is that on the screen for uh yeah yeah the if we just go down to the variance that being sought uh, 
is, is this actually what was built or was this actually no uh, sir th those variances were not uh were not uh, uh i'm assuming they were approved but they were not they were um, they were not implemented no okay so, well, I, I assume what i assume when i read this last night was that you got the approval it was built and now you're gonna it's gonna somehow no. into a fourplex no, the unit of 50, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Chair, the unit of 50 uh, Castleton has not been altered from its original state. This variance was not used uh, to reconstruct it. So okay. it's, a brand, it's a brand new variance that we're seeking. Okay, but in addition to that variance, there's no other variances in terms of the built form of the of the property on the interior that will not trigger. And those, I just good to notify, I guess we, you didn't do it, the previous decision although approved was never was never proceeded with correct so that was for a different proposal the built form as we're proposing meets all regulatory requirements uh, save and accept the variance that's before you okay yeah okay and i agree it was arlene beaumont the reason when i was it turns out the neighbor is jeff folds and your firm is we're in folds so that's <laughs> where i just quickly looked at that so yes, it looks like those neighbors were on site. So those that did not now be able to confirm that it was not built. And in fact, then is this is this decision valid? So uh, you're a professional planner. So let's say we give you this, you get this permission to do a fourplex. Right? Yes. Can you yes. then go back and say, okay, now we're going to still build this second story addition, two story front addition, new front porch near your your deck, because that is still a valid decision that is not. Uh, affected by the decision you're seeking to get here today, Madam Secretary. I, that's a, yeah, that's a very interesting legal question. I can give you my planning take on it. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I think uh, I don't know how you can remove a decision once it's approved from the record. Uh, but certainly, uh, and there's no time lapsing on that. So certainly, that is not what we're proposing. And in my view, the approval if uh, your committee feels that they should be granted, um, will replace that because the new owner does not intend to build that one. So okay. yes, it okay. does stay on the record, I think. Well, uh, in that case, I'm very happy to hear what you had to say because I think maybe me or the neighbors would think, hmm, they're gonna get their approval for a fourplex, then they're gonna come and build this as of right, increasing to 0 0.09 uh, and any or all of those other few variances that were granted. So. No, no measure could no. we not have as a precursor to this that if they're proceeding just to, for the neighbor's comfort we haven't still heard we haven't had this approved this approved yet but at this point can mr uh mr cronus on behalf of his client the new corporation agree that the previous january 21 2021 committee decision is not valid and falls away that's my question for either mr cronus or for staff and I'm sure the neighbors will be interested as well. Uh, sir, if I can just take another crack at it, we do not intend to utilize this decision. Uh, our our proposal is is for a fourplex, and if you want to put a condition in there that says the decision of whatever date and whatever number is no longer valid, that will be fine. Yeah, and this, this sup supersedes it. I'm, yes. So I'm just asking if that is permitted. I think, as a just to clarify your position, that you're not going. It's not a two step in reverse no. where you get your no. permission for a fourplex and then say, okay, now we're going to go and build what we didn't build in, back in 2021. Okay, no, thanks. sir, not, not the intent so, at all. Barb, I assume that is acceptable? No, Mr. Chair, you can't take away something that was approved and is final and binding because what happens if they choose not to go ahead with the fourplex? You don't want to take away their right to go ahead with the proposal that was approved in 2001. Um, part of the reason why there are no development standards is because it's a use. So if the committee's inclined following all the presentations to make a decision to approve, you could tie it to the plans and be specific to say the proposed fourplex shall be constructed as illustrated on the plan submitted with the application. Okay, that's that how we... kind of idea oh. versus um, uh very trying good. to take something away. Okay, but these are the plans that were approved for the four plan that Mr. Cronus's client is coming in with, and we can tie it to that. So that's how yeah. we deal. Yeah, okay, that's, a, that's an excellent suggestion. Thank you, yeah. uh, Secretary Treasurer. Thinking in, in, you know, the neighbors who are listening in and who have yet to speak, that uh, want them to feel that, that this is not what is the intention and what could happen. 
So I think that's a way good way to, to, to resolve it the way Madam Secretary Treasurer just suggested by tying it to these plans. Okay. Uh, if that's, does anyone have any further questions for Mr. Cronus before we? I, I do, Mr. Chair. It's Stan. Yeah. Um, hi, Paul. Uh, just good, a good afternoon, Mr. Kumar. Good afternoon, Mr. Cronus. Um, the previous decision contemplated an addition in the front. Uh, what you're proposing now is an addition in the rear. Correct. And the addition in the front I find intriguing because it would be more in keeping with the streetscape, given that this the existing uh, dwelling is set back considerably from the two neighbors and the rest of the street. Um, in fact, I, that, that'll lead to my second question as well. I'm just curious why your applicant is, your, your client is choosing to build in the rear as opposed to in the front, but that's their decision. Um, there's also, a, you're also contemplating a laneway suite, um, which I know you're not, there's no variances for that. But my question is, if this addition is built the way it is right now, will you need to come back to committee for any variances for that laneway suite? Uh, it's, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kumar, thank you for your question. The front addition triggers a whole set of other variances and, uh, and we uh, wanted to minimize uh, the impacts of uh, the cumulative variances. So we just simplified it, worked within the zoning bylaw limits. Uh, this is an existing arrangement on the street. So it is part of the fabric, uh, the setback. Uh, so we wanted to maintain that to the extent possible. Uh, and I think we've achieved that. Um, so the rear addition works much better for the layout that's being proposed. In respect of the laneway suite, that's been approved uh, through a ZAP, the zoning application uh, process. So there's no variances required for the laneway suite. It could be built. Uh, well, was, it, was it approved uh, as it sits right now with the existing house or um, will it still conform with this addition? So, yes, uh, we, uh, so when you have a laneway suite and you have a main building, you're required to file contemporaneous uh, zoning reviews for both. So we did. So the plans that we submitted included both the laneway suite, which was a separate re review process right. and the main building, which is a separate. So they were reviewed together, not independently together. And there were no variances that are required for the laneway suite. They fully comply with the new build form for the front building. Okay, so so with this addition at the back, you, you will conform to the minimum uh, required soft landscaping and distance from the rear uh, of the new structure, et cetera. All, all that, sir, yes, that's absolutely correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and I see you did send an email to uh, January 11th to Adam Wills advising the variance is not required for the laneway suite because he was asking, rightly so, with, you know, Correct. So that's been dealt with. Okay. So and, and if and if you look, sorry, and if you look at the plans, you'll see it has both the language suite and the yeah. um the uh, main building. Correct. Okay. Um. So let's hear then from um. No one has any more further questions for Mr. Cronus. Let's hear from the neighbor at fifty two, Deborah Chandler. Mr. Chair, this will be um. It'll be uh, Jeff Folds. So one moment. Great. Okay. Go ahead, Jeff. So. I guess the, uh, the the concern that we have is on the density side, <clears throat> uh, and potentially on the uh, well. Let's start with the density thing first. From the the density point of view, we're we're looking at a, a fourplex with two bedrooms in each fourplex, so uh, eight bedrooms in total. Um, Plus whatever's going on with the laneway, which is another uh, two story dwelling. Uh, so we, we didn't ha get any visibility to what was going on with the laneway proposal. So we haven't had a chance really to see into that at all. Um, we're certainly familiar with the issues around uh, housing availability in the city. So, I mean, we're not interested in standing in the way of, of making more space available, believe me. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this property at 50 Castleton, but um, just about anything would be better than the mess that's there right now. And, um, you know, we've been very happy with 
the ownership of that's taken over in terms of, uh, you know, the, the chimney was deteriorating and threatening to fall over. Uh, they immediately came and cleaned all that up. They've hired people to keep the grass cut and the, the shrubs under control, which nobody was doing before. So I, I'm not trying to be a blocker here, but we just want to make sure that uh, you know this is within what's permitted with the density requirements. Uh, and then I just have one comment then on the setback issue. There's setback noted on both sides of 0.4 meters for this property, this house. The plans which showed where the laneway house is show that there's no setback. It's right on the lot line. And I would point out that this is an active termite neighborhood. Our house has been attacked several times. We've had to have uh, the test pesticide people come in and treat the foundation. They need to be able to get right up against the foundation wall in order to be able to do that. Uh, not only did we have to have our house treated, we had to have our garage treated. So this this not having seen the, the layouts for the laneway house, this may just be an error on this drawing that shows it right up against the fence line. I don't know, but I would like to draw that to the committee's attention. So I think those are our, our two main concerns. Okay, and just to confirm from Mr. Cronus is when you talk about the coverage, it's a, the 0 0.8 is what's permitted. The 0 0.9 that you got for January 21, 2021, you're not gonna be proceeding with. So you're talking when you talk about the density, it's 0.8. I was supposed to the number of people on the property, but you're talking about 0.8, correct, Mr. Cronus? Mr. Chair, one moment. We'll go bring Mr. Cronus back. Yeah. Hello. Right. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'll, I'll, I'm on now. Yeah, based on. Your folds has to say, um, yes, I heard the question. Uh, yeah. the, the permitted density is, as you've stated is 0.8. Uh, the existing density on the property is 0.21. The proposed density is 0.77. So, uh, we're within the permitted density. Um, and in respect of the setback of the laneway suite, um, it you'll is get correctly the I just, sorry, we'll, we'll hear from the other neighbor and then you'll have your chance. Oh, to sure. Both of them. Thank you. Hang on to that. Thanks so much. Okay, so does anyone have any questions for uh, Mr. Folds? Uh, if not, we'll go to the, next, the neighbor at 48 on the other side, Carrie Muscat. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Sorry, Terry. Mr. Chair. Um, just for Jeff Folds, if we could unmute him. We don't have his email address on file, so I just need to know from him if we can use Deborah's or if he can email our general email box to provide us that so we can send him a decision. So Mr. that's, Holt? yeah, so. Um, I don't want you true. stating your email address on over YouTube. Right. So that's so, fine. So uh, let's just go with Deborah's email address. We do share, we live together okay. after all. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Okay, back to Terry Muscat. Hi everyone, this is Terry Muscat. I'm the owner of 48 Castleton Avenue. Uh, I have a few questions and concerns and comments. Um, number one, I just wanted to make sure, uh, because we've gone through this in the past with the last uh, application, I wanted to make sure that the house uh, does not overhang past my fence or my property line. Um, the second thing I wanted to, to confirm how far the house is from the fence, from my fence. Also, um, will there be any windows on the side of the house between 48 and 50 Castleton? I'm concerned about privacy, especially on my deck. And I just feel like this, this uh, quadruplex would dominate the backyard as well as the, the laneway suite. My other comment, uh, my next one is that um, I, I own the wood fence and I'm not sure if the construction is going to affect the fence. I'm not sure if this is something that you guys can even address. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was that I had not received any information about the laneway suite. Uh, this concerns me. We were not part of the review process. Um, and also, 
I, I'm not sure what's going to happen with the path. Um, I haven't really had a chance to review the laneway part, but I, I understand there's supposed to be a path going from the back laneway to the front so that whoever's residing there can uh, bring back and forth their garbage bins, etc. What side is that going to be on? Those are all my questions and concerns. Okay, thank you, Mr. Muscat. Uh, before we go back to the applicant, it's raised a very good question. The purpose of this application says to construct a new fourplex. The question is why it also didn't say and a garden or a laneway suite. Um, so that's a question for Mr. Ronis and whether staff, whether we have proper notice in that case. Uh, that clearly was not the attention by reading the notice about notices anyway. Uh, but given that this is did this not have been part of the purpose of the application is my question. So, Mr. Chair, um, Adam in our office did confirm with the agent prior to sending out the notice because it's permitted as of right and we don't want to give the impression that that's part of what the committee is considering. The suite in the back is permitted as advised by the applicant. So it's not before the committee and it's not something the neighbors while it's helpful to see it, it is shown on the plans, they're not hiding it. Um, it's not something the committee is deciding upon today. Okay, so the fact is, I guess, because there are no variances, if there were variances related to the, the garden suite, this sort of rainway suite, then that would be the case. But since it's not, um, <laughs> it still would be you know, that they're building something, but you're saying it doesn't require to be mentioned in the purpose of the application because there are no variances occasioned by that. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Cronus, if you can just answer the questions raised, the concerns raised by the neighbors. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. I, I believe uh, the uh, from uh, Mr. Folds, uh, the, uh, the the big question was the issue of density, and I think we've answered that. The, it's not the uh, bedroom count, it's the unit count, and the density complies with, uh, with zoning. We're at 0 0.77 versus 0 0.8. Um, in, with respect to uh, Ms. Muscat, I was just reviewing the plans just to uh, orientate myself because I didn't have any advance notice that uh, they would be on on the line. So um, the the question of the path, uh, well, first of all, the question of the overhang, there isn't any, uh, and the fence. Uh, I can assure you, these are uh, quality quality builders uh, just for context purposes. They build the Princess Margaret uh, Foundation homes that are auctioned or are part of the uh, Princess Lottery um, Foundation, uh, the homes in Oakville. So they're uh, probably one of the most prime builders, uh, you know, that I've come across. Uh, they are very uh, meticulous in their design, their product, and also uh, to be um, uh, very friendly neighbors. And uh, if there's issues with the fence, they will take care of it. Uh, uh, so there's no overhang. Uh, if the fence needs to be replaced and uh, removed and replaced, uh, they, they will consult with the neighbor and do so. In terms of the setbacks, uh, they're uh, 0.3 and 0.4, as stated in the plans, that they had full compliance with, uh, with the uh, zoning bylaw. So there is no room for a path, uh, you know, given the 0.3 and the 0.3 feet are setback. So uh, any garbage uh, that needs to be uh, maneuvered around will have to uh, be carried. Um, uh, you know, probably a rear rear yard pickup or front yard pickup, but um, uh, you know there there is no path that connects the two. Um, and then I guess the last thing is windows, and that would be on the um, trying to get myself orientated on the east elevation, I believe. The architect marks them. Uh, there's there are very small windows on the uh, right elevation. There are no windows on the left elevation. So that would be the side facing um, uh, Ms. Muscat. There are small upper windows on the third floor. Uh, and again, because of the, uh, of the separation distance, the setbacks, uh, the building code uh, would come into play in terms of openings and uh, separation distance. And because of the 0.4 meter setback, there's no opportunity for windows or the 0.3 meter setback, there's no opportunity for windows, but there is, on the right elevation, so on the uh, north side, uh, on the property to uh, at 52. Yeah. 
I, I don't know if I missed anything. I hope I answered everyone's questions, but if I have, please uh, refresh me. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cronus. Uh, members, any questions for Mr. Cronus or for the two neighbors, if that for that matter, uh, or else let's bring it into committee for a decision. Uh, Chair, the the one neighbor asked about the setback of the um, the rear dwelling, which I you know I I don't know that that's subject to this application. So, uh, but maybe Mr. Cronus can just clarify that on the. Uh, yes, sorry, it, the, I, I, I did recall I forgot something and that was it. There is a setback that's shown uh, to the property line. I'm trying to get a dimension. My eyes are failing me at my age and I need a magnifying glass, but it seems to be uh, at least over a meter, a meter and a half, but there is a setback and it's a full compliance with uh, the zoning bylaw again. It's not right on the property line. And and that you can see that on on site plan SP. If uh, if someone wants to put it up just for confirmation. And, and that's and, and that's marked as a proposed walkway. So there is a, a separation distance, a setback from the rear laneway suite to the laneway. I don't know, uh, sir, if that answered your question and that of the neighbors, but. Uh, just reiterating what I said that there is a setback and there is a walkway, a pathway. And uh, again, you know, that that's not before you, but for information purposes and the plans that have been uh, uploaded on your AIC site app, application information center uh, clearly should demonstrate that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other questions, Mr. Palmer, anybody else, or is someone ready for a motion? Get a visual and everyone together. So please just call out your name and you're ready. Uh, oh, Stan, go ahead. Go, go ahead, ahead, Leon. So you beat me to it. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're looking at strictly, I guess, the number of units, really. It's a really a technical variance, and I think Mr. Cronus has done a good job explaining uh, what his client is looking for. So I'm ready to move for approval. The variances requested are minor in nature and meet the four tests in the Planning Act. Uh, no conditions. Okay, we were talking about a, a condition now to... Oh, tied to the site plan. Okay. We can... Mr. Cronus, can you assist what we just... Uh... We're talking about. I don't see the reason to do that. Mm, um, well, I in my my hypothetical I brought up, it's the question of whether that previous decision would still be uh, is still in effect. So, in other words, by a sleight of hand, Mr. Cronus would say, "Okay, I'll pick and choose. I'll take. I don't know if he could do it. I got I got variance one at point nine. Uh, I got uh, other setbacks and things, which he said he's not proceeding with now. They didn't go ahead with this build. This application is redundant, but staff tells me I'm not allowed to, we're not allowed to, uh, you know, say that this of no force and effect. So it stays on the record. It was a previous owner. So we figured Mr. Cronus came out with a, it was his suggestion, I believe, to, uh, to somehow show his clients uh, bona fides and the fact they're not going to, pull a sleight of hand and say, hold on, we have a floor space index that allows us to go to point nine here. Okay, so I'll, I'll just say generally in accordance with the site plan that was submitted with the application. Yeah. Is, is that sufficient? I think, so. Barb? Yes, yeah. that's fine. No reason to believe, you know, Mr. Cronus when he says, but uh, he's got a client and, uh, uh, you know, they could sell it again and say, oh, okay, we have a, we have these variances that are sitting on the shelf from the, you know, up in the cloud and we'll, let's pull one of them down and use it. So this is how he shows that he did say at the outset, and my questioning, he's not, that's not the intent here. That was an approval that didn't go ahead and I believe him, but this is the way they keep, the uh, way we can accomplish that. So Barb, is that sufficient? Yes. Okay. So thank you for that revision to your motion. Do we have a seconder for that one yet or no? Not yet. Okay, seconder for that motion. So Ms. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, all in favor? Okay, it's unanimous. Mr. Cronus, thank you to you and thank you to the neighbors and best of luck with your project. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon to all. Yeah, badly needed, uh, you know, housing. And as the neighbor said, it's an eyesore, so they're happy to see something done here. Thank you. Okay, so we're now finished the morning session. Uh, it's about 1.15. Do you want to come back at uh, 2.30? Is yes. that okay? Yeah. Yes. Yep. That'll allow you an hour and then some time to do a, a sound check. So let's return here at uh, 2.30 to do the afternoon, the one, sorry, the one o'clock session, because we also have a 3 p.m. So we have one item on the 3 p.m. agenda. Okay, perhaps so they for, can... Yep, for anyone on the line waiting for the afternoon items, uh, we're just finishing our morning session, so we'll be back around 2.15 to do a sound check for you. Okay. We'll see everyone back at uh, 2.30.